Tifo display we got at the start of the game, which you actually joined in with. The Wolves fans holding up the uh, the black and old gold plastic sheets. It looked magnificent. Yeah, it did. It partially joined in. You know, I was given the thing on my seat. I was. I decided to join in that way. Certainly impartial in this game. But you're right. The atmosphere is is fantastic. The colours are there for everybody to see. The fact that the away fans get so many more travelling fans in, at this stage yeah. of it well in the FA Cup competition always makes the atmosphere brilliant I hope we're in for a good afternoon Totti into the Wolves team driving forward very noticeable with the bright peroxide hair Eight Nuri playing further ahead of him on the left hand side plays back to the edge of that Wolves penalty area and the young Uruguayan Santiago Bueno moves the ball out to the right hand side getting onto it in the middle of the park is Joao Gomez uh, just teasing a couple of Coventry players in front of him inside his own half, looking for an option. I'll run you through the two full team lineups in just a second when we get our first break in play. Long diagonal onto the chest of Eight Nuri. He's got support from Mario Lamina, doesn't need it. Eight Nuri with a nice little trick, brings himself in field, gets tripped by Lata Baudier, and that is going to be uh, a free kick to Wolves. And you spotted that in the warm up, Leon. We thought it might be back threes for both teams, but actually it looks like back four for Wolves with Eight Nuri in an attacking position on the left. Potentially, I mean, it's probably a bit too early just to cement that into into what we're going to see at the moment. But he is very advanced on that left side. Also, Lamina is is pulling himself out onto the left hand side. Maybe trying to get some sort of overload in that area of the pitch. One to keep an eye on, certainly. Uh, so your Wolves line up for this one. The ball's gone behind for a Coventry goal kick. They're defending the goal in front of that stand. Kelly stand away to our left hand side. Jose Sar uh, in goal. Nelson Semedo, the right back, Santiago Bueno and the captain Max Kilman, the two centre backs. Totti starting at left back as the goal kick is driven high down the middle of the field, hooked away to the right. Here's Kilman with a chance to clear on the half volley. Down the touchline it goes, headed powerfully forward towards Hadji Wright for Coventry. And then Jake Bidwell just cushioned a little pass down the line for the Coventry centre forward, Ellis Sims, who helped himself to a hat trick in the 5 0 win against Maidstone in the last round. He's knocked off the ball, Wolves have it, and they'll start uh, to bring it out from the back. So eight Nuri is wide on the right-hand side. Joao Gomez, Mario Lamina, and young Tommy Doyle uh, in the Wolves midfield. Sarabia wide right, and then Nathan Fraser, the young Irish striker, playing through the middle for Wolves, who are missing the likes of Pedro Neta, jean Rickner Bellegarde, Huang Hee Chan, and Mateus Cunha through injury at the moment. Here's Doyle. Doyle very quickly plays back to Bueno. Bueno sees space to move into. Gary O'Neill's hopping around on the touchline because he spotted space on the left-hand side for Walls to exploit. Sarabia strokes it forward. Eight Nuri chases it. It runs away from him and goes behind for the goal kick to Coventry. Three minutes in in the FA Cup quarter-final and it's Walls nil, Coventry nil. Yeah, both teams are playing a little bit of cat and mouse with the, the systems at the line. Look, Coventry are trying to filter out into a back four at the moment on top of the air maybe coming into the, the right back position and uh, Bidwell in that left back position and maybe right playing all the way out on the left Wolves are trying to adjust accordingly so it's quite interesting watching these early moments Casey Palmer who plays in the number 10 role for Coventry very good on the ball for them as I say that he slips over on the halfway lie though and Tommy Doyle is able to nip in for Wolves ball forward with the outside of his right foot unceremoniously cleared into the Wolves half given away by Totti then one back there's a foul by eight Nuri though and that's on Josh Eccles and that'll be a free kick to Coventry they take that quickly they want to go quickly but our referee Sam Barrett's going to pull them back and they'll have to retake that. So that would have the Dutchman, Milan van Erwijk, who's coming to the team this afternoon, in an attacking position on the right. Hadji right on the left. Ellis Sims through the middle with Casey Palmer in behind him. Uh, Jake Bidwell as the left back. Uh, Lata Bodier, former Manchester City player who Coventry signed from Swansea in the summer at right back. Bobby Thomas and Liam Kitching as the two centre-backs with Bradley Collins in goal and Ben Sheaf, the captain, alongside Josh Eccles in central midfield. Coventry in the sky blue shirts, which have a, a vertical white stripe within them, sky blue shorts and sky blue socks. FA Cup winners in 1987 are bumped into Steven Grizovic, a goalkeeper, long-standing Coventry goalkeeper, fabulous player uh, for them, telling me uh, when I arrived he was once sent off. He was asked by a Wolves fan, as I was standing next to him, of his experiences of Molyneux. 
The only thing he could remember was getting sent off uh, in a game here. Van Ervaert gets across into the Wolves penalty area. It's headed away. Latter Baudier chests it down, makes a run into the box. Doyle's there to win a tackle. Got a bit of skill as well. Takes him round Van Ervaert. And then he's able to play the ball back to Ait Nuri. And Ait Nuri casually strokes it across the face of the Wolves penalty area. Glancing header from Sims, who is trying to intercept it. And it goes out for a Wolves throw on the right. Leon Osmond. Yeah, confident start by Coventry. As you said, with that the system, they've got players in a lot more advanced positions, they're getting forward, they're moving the ball around pretty well. I'm still trying to work out exactly what Wolves are going to adapt into. Lamina is still playing quite advanced on, on the left-hand side, around where we probably expect Eight Nori to have played. They're trying to filter across, they're a back five at, at, at the moment, so what Coventry have done is really given... Um, this Wolves team something to think about diagonal ball out to Van Ayrvike heavy first touch but he got to the ball first Eight Nuri comes sliding in fouls him free kick for Coventry about 27-28 yards out and an early booking for Eight Nuri as well for the challenge yeah sometimes you get away with them really early in the game but there's no doubt it probably should be a yellow card and the referee Wright stood over it was in a great position he was quick to not only give the free kick, to, but to bring out the yellow card. Eight Nuri has no complaints, and as I said, it's Coventry that have started this, this game quite well. They've been in this Wolves' heart for the majority of the time, spreading passes. That was a great diagonal, and yeah, now they've got a free kick early in the game in a really good position. Just three defeats in their last 22 games. Coming to this one off the back of a couple of wins in the Championship as well, where they won 2-1 at Watford last Saturday, a 5-0 win against Rotherham the Tuesday before. Ellis Sims with another hat-trick in that one. He's got eight in his last seven games. He's not going to strike this free kick. Could be Casey Palmer. Could be Jake Bidwell. He's very carefully measured the steps back. He's actually standing almost at a right angle to the ball if you were standing behind the ball and looking directly at the goal. Jose Sarr, Wolves Portuguese keeper, in a dark shade of pink, was just down on his haunches by his left-hand post, lining up the Wolves' wall. But Bidwell or Palmer might fancy a strike at this. Seven minutes into the cup tie. Here's Bidwell, he dummies it. Palmer's actually going to curl the ball in towards the far post. Headed up in the air, half cleared to the edge of the box. It'll come back to Palmer again. Palmer curls a cross in, good ball as well. Diving header attempt on the edge of the six-yard box. And it's glanced behind for Coventry's first corner of the game. Yeah, Wolves nearly fell asleep in that moment. Everybody expecting set-piece to be taken straight at goal, but it wasn't. It was moved really well created a, a better angle to put a good delivery in winning the first header on the first occasion couldn't get it on target maneuvered the ball around well to put another dangerous cross in and it was actually really good defended at the far post and keeping the pressure on Coventry they're now forced to corner welcome to Molyneux on BBC Radio 5 Live if you hadn't realised it was a 12-15 kickoff in the FA Cup this afternoon Coventry have taken their corner cross into the box is poor volleyed away Van Ervijk is the last man back for Coventry. Controls on the halfway line. Driven ball out to the left-hand side. Still Coventry a chance to get a ball into the penalty area. Stooping header away from Max Kilman. Comes back out to the left again. Sheaf plays it back to Palmer. Palmer comes back towards the halfway line for Coventry. Across the latter Baudier. Palmer's involved again. Van Ervijk with a first-time ball. Latter Baudier couldn't quite control it. And Wolves win it back inside their own half. Tommy Doyle on loan from Manchester City, the 20-year-old, talking about that goal he scored at Bramall Lane to win the quarter-final last season, then couldn't play in the semi-final. Well, that could easily happen again this afternoon, on loan from Manchester City, could score a winner, could get drawn against them in the in the semi-finals. I have felt guilty about that ever since it happened. Since it happened. I did the draw <laughs> the semi-final on that occasion and drew him against his parent club, oh, so no. I do hold guilt. Palmer, Palmer's ball to the left-hand side, will reach Hadji Wright, Wright sprints to the left to collect it, starts to run into the box, looking for the layoff towards the edge of the penalty area, Bidwell was up in support, he didn't get the pass right, now Semedo is onto it for Wolves inside his own half, nine minutes gone then in the first half at Molyneux, five live and BBC Sounds, FA Cup quarter-final commentary. Uh, to begin a very, very busy Saturday afternoon and evening of sport across Five Live and Sports Extra. And it's still Wolves nil, Coventry uh, nil. The three o'clock 
commentary this afternoon in the Premier League is going to be a very tense listen at Kenilworth Road if you're a Luton fan or a Nottingham Forest fan lovely ball out to the left well controlled by eight Nuri low bouncing cross comes into the Coventry box and goalkeeper Bradley Collins is able to lean forward and catch it with both hands yeah comfortable in the end bringing that into his into his body from Collins it was a good switch of play from Wolves first time we've really seen them get into the Coventry half with possession of the ball they didn't have enough people attacking the penalty area. They only had Fraser making that run. Sarabia slow to get forward. Gomez, Doyle, Lamina not quite in attacking positions. And I think that'll be the problem for Wolves today. The instinct to get forward and support the striker. All of those behind I've just mentioned are all more proper midfielders. We don't get enough goals as it comes. And they need one of them to get on today, maybe. Wolves starting to build from inside their own half play to the right to Sarabia Semedo in support, takes his time steadies himself, crosses into the near post and Bobby Thomas, former Burnley centre back is there to powerfully head it away, Hadji Wright plays down the line to Casey Palmer back to the American international right again, into midfield it goes Ben Sheaf, the Coventry captain, made a substitute appearance in the last game at Watford, a first appearance in ten games, having missed the previous nine and here he is starting in central midfield this afternoon. I'm sure the Coventry fans will be delighted about that. On the turn in midfield, there is Joao Gomez for Wolves, back to Kilman. Tommy Doyle makes himself available, little scamp of a player, comes tearing across the Wolves' half. Plays it to the left to Mario Lamina, who is uh, holding his position very wide on the left-hand side for Wolves in the early stages of this cup tie. Second quarter final today, Manchester City against Newcastle kicks off at half five, available to watch on BBC One. Second half commentary of that one with John Murray and Chris Waddle uh, after we're finished with the Ireland Scotland commentary uh, in the Six Nations. France against England in full tonight uh, as well. That one kicks off at eight o'clock. Here's Eight Nuri, stabs the ball to his left with the outside of his left boot. Lamina looking for a step over. Can't quite muscle his way past Latabodier. Back to Tommy Doyle. Clever little back heel flick from Doyle. Now Joao Gomez. Couple of one twos with Eight Nuri. Brilliantly worked. Edge of the box. Eight Nuri available again on the left. The Wolves fans behind the goal stand up in excitement. Eight Nuri's cross into the near post is blocked and it goes behind for a corner. Some really intricate passing from Wolves around the commentary box there, Leon. Yeah, as close as they were, those commentary players, they just couldn't put a, a tackle in against that quality play. Ain't Nuri very much involved, and then when he turned Latabodier in the penalty here, I thought for a moment he was going to give a penalty away. As we just see, Jose Sarr's down. Ooh. Jose Sarr is down, sitting down on his own, inside his own half, giving the referee a thumbs up at the moment, Sam Barrett, maybe to thank him for just spotting that. Both sets of, of players, the outfield players, some of them from each team, come jogging over towards the touchlines to have a word with the bosses, Gary O'Neill and Mark Robbins. But that's a problem for Wolves, the uh, regular starter between the sticks, Jose Sarr, extremely experienced goalkeeper, is down and is having his right leg stretched out at the moment. Substitute option is Dan Bentley, former Bristol City goalkeeper, equally experienced in terms of a, a long career in the game. Gary O'Neill's got the iPad out, Leon, on the touchline. Yeah, he's... Showing the players tactically just some little movements, some, some differences he wants them to do from what he's seen in the opening 13 minutes of the game and shows the technology you can use to help you on the pitch. And Jose Sarr looks like he's getting up at the moment. It is always a worry when your goalkeeper goes down at the when the play is at the opposite end of the field, holding not like the top of his thigh kind of area. You see, I have to keep an eye on that one, Ali. Yeah, he has received... Uh, some brief medical attention there. Back on his feet, stretching off and limbering up. Midway inside the Wolves' half, but our eyes switch to the left-hand side because Wolves are going to take their corner. Eight Nuri receives it from Doyle. Back to Sarabia, sweet cross into the box. Sims heads it away. Cushion control, and then Van Erwijk is able to charge forwards and running hard at Semedo here, and Wolves desperately trying to get back, and Van Erwijk is quick, tries to beat Semedo on the outside. Semedo defended it well, watched the ball all the way, just nudges him with a left shoulder, tries to bring it away down the right, claims he was knocked off balance. Coventry have won it back in an attacking position 
on the left-hand side. Here's Hadji Wright. Bidwell on the outside, but he comes inside to Palmer. Van Ervijk is still there. Turns one round the corner. Kilman clears for Wolves. Fraser lays it back. Coventry win it back. Close to the Wolves' penalty area. Sarabia in with a challenge. Palmer in to win the next tackle. And Wolves finally able to bring the ball away, much to the relief of the home fans. Little one-two between Eight Nuri and Lamina. Eight Nuri was tripped, but the referee's going to play an advantage here, and Totti drives forward for Wolves, looking to release Lamina away down the left-hand side. Pass didn't get there. Chance for Coventry to bring it out. Lovely first touch from Casey Palmer, looking for the run here from Ellis Sims. Kilman just gets there first for Wolves, passes to his right, and Semedo has lost it now. And here's a chance for Sims. Sims into the penalty area, lays it back to Palmer. Early shot, not the best strike from him. Ball is deflected, runs to Van Ervijk, cross into the far post. Kilman's there, glancing header behind him. And away it goes to the left, and Hadji Wright will keep this in play. Lively start to the cup tie. Here is Wright, onto his right foot. And the shot goes fizzing across the face of goal and behind for a Wolves goal kick, Leon Osman. Oh, well, Mark Robbins on the line. I mean, I'm seeing him now applauding his whole team. It'll be disappointed that at least they haven't hit the target in one of these efforts. They haven't really made a potentially injured Jose Sarr make a save at this point, but they've had an awful lot of play. Their endeavour has been brilliant. Their energy has been outstanding to the point you can see some of them just with hands to the knees, breathing heavy at the moment. They really are asking a lot of themselves early in this game, trying to force the issue against Wolves, and they've nearly created the first major opportunity. We'll give you the uh, obligatory Mark Robbins FA Cup reference early on in this commentary. A uh, name written down in the folklore of the competition, the third round winner against Nottingham Forest, which apparently, uh, as the legend goes, saved Sir Alex Ferguson's job. Manchester United going on to win the Cup that year. What some people forget, it actually took a semi-final replay against Oldham, and Mark Robbins scored the winner uh, in that game as well. Played a big, big part in Manchester United winning uh, the FA Cup back in 1990. Now 17 years in management, seven years at Coventry, and he's improved their league position uh, for the last six seasons, painfully denied at Wembley last season in the playoff final uh, against Luton. Here he is trying to take his team into an FA Cup semi-final for what would be only Coventry's second ever uh, FA Cup semi-final. This is an eighth quarter final, but of the previous seven, they've only won one, that was back in 87. And, of course, famously went on uh, to win the Cup in one of the great finals with the Keith Houchin diving header, eventually beating Tottenham by three goals to two after extra time. They've taken a free kick and they're knocking the ball around inside their own half, the championship team, looking very comfortable. Slightly overhit pass, doesn't find Palmer. Layoff from eight, Nuri does find Tommy Doyle. Doyle side foots a ball to his right and Semedo comes jogging onto it for Wolves. Casually plays a one-two with Lamina, who's now drifted over to the right and Sarabia's... Taken up station on the left-hand side for Wolves. Here is Lamina with his socks rolled down, exposing bulging calf muscles. Kilman drives the long diagonal away to the left. Won't quite reach Sarabia. Latabodier's header intercepted by Eight Nuri. Short pass to Sarabia. Sarabia on the move. Swings a ball out to the right. Chested down by Semedo. Flicks his pass to Lamina. Lamina gets to the byline, cross into the near post. Eight Nuri is there, controls it. He's eventually tackled, and Coventry happy just to clear it out for a Wolves throw in an attacking position on the right. Oh, I think Nuri and Lamina just seem to be involved in all of Wolves' best moves at the moment. The pair of them actually all the way over to the right hand side beyond that near post, nearly creating a big chance for Wolves, but really good defender from Coventry. It's Leon Osman with us at Molyneux. Leon, who played in and FA Cup final 2009 for Everton and Louis Saha got Everton off to an absolute flyer scored too early Alec <laughs> scored too early <laughs> first minute of the game <laughs> and eventually went down 2-1 to Chelsea who will feature in an FA Cup commentary uh, tomorrow on 5 Live and BBC Sounds Chelsea Leicester kicks off at 12.45 the game also available on BBC One decent tie this one so far though 18 minutes in Wolves nil, Coventry of the Championship nil, Jose Saar, so since he went down injured, that's his first real involvement in the game, couple of touches and then passes out to the left to Totti, eight Nuri, knocked to the floor by Latta Bodier as he was just shielding the ball and holding his man off inside the Wolves half, Wolves get the free kick. Yeah, just a little bit naive, Latta Bodier, just eight Nuri feeling the pressure, he didn't do an awful lot, but sometimes if you get too tight, 
to your opposite number, they'll just be able to go to ground easy. That's what happened there. Swansea Cardiff underway now in the Championship, as is Oldham Chesterfield in the National League. As Mark was saying, Chesterfield will be promoted back to the Football League today if they win that game and if Barnet then fail to beat Woking. So we'll be keeping an eye across all of that this afternoon. Throw in from Latter Bodier for Coventry into Casey Palmer. Tommy Doyle right behind him, just sticks out a right leg and knocks the ball out for another throw to Coventry. Just under a decade since these two teams played each other when they were both in League One in the 2013-14 season. They shared a couple of one-all draws that season. Latter Bodier takes the throw. Sheaf happy just to play it back here to centre-back Bobby Thomas, who in turn goes to his goalkeeper, Bradley Collins. Coventry then slide a pass up the right to Van Ervijk. Back to Palmer, looking for Sims. Sims hooks it on here. Van Ervijk won't get there. Totti's got it covered. And Totti just very carefully side-foots a pass back to his goalkeeper, Saar. Short little ball from him to Kilman. Doyle drops in deep in midfield. Low one out to Semedo. Doyle involved again. Wide it goes to Sarabia. Here is Sarabia on the ball inside his own half. And Doyle, again used as the pivot. First time pass, sweeps it across the face of the Wolves box. And Totti has space to bring it out from the back. Rolls it on to Sarabia. Sarabia makes 10 yards, plays up to Lamina in the inside left channel. Eight Nuri wide on the left. Ball into the near post. Sarabia stretches with his left foot, doesn't make contact. And it's in the arms of the Coventry keeper. Bradley Collins and what just came to mind there Leon do you remember the goal Sarabia scored against Tottenham earlier this season in a similar sort of position I do and that one on that occasion I believe he took a touch before he made the finish on this occasion he tried to hit it across his body or at least carry it on from the direction it's such a difficult thing to do especially on, on the volley but Wolves are growing into this game now they've knocked a couple of passes they're starting to just calm those early nerves Sarabia battling for a ball with Bidwell. Bidwell slides in, knocks it away. The two of them bump shoulder to shoulder. Kilman collects it for Wolves just inside his own half. Tommy Doyle again making himself available for Wolves. Whips a pass across the halfway line to Totti. Totti lays it off to Eight Nuri, starts a run and then stops. Receives it again from Eight Nuri, who plays back into his own half. And here's Santiago Dueno, one of the Wolves centre backs across to. Totti with his right foot scoops a ball forward a hopeful pass Coventry should deal with that Bobby Thomas slightly scuffed the clearance away so Wolves have won it with eight Nuri Lamina's wide on the left for him Lamina rolls a ball in field here to Joao Gomez Gomez just dummies a pass straight and plays it to his right to Kilman who's been encouraged to come forward in this attack for Wolves Adji right in front of him Kilman gets the cross in with his left foot way too close to the goalkeeper who's able to pat that down and immediately bowl it out underarm to Palmer Palmer looks to get Sims away quickly diagonal ball from right to left Sims will chase running hard keeps it in play and he's now up against Bueno who's backpedalling for Wolves Bueno does really well gets a foot on the ball turns into a very good pass and the Wolves fans as you can hear encouraged by a chance coming on the counter Sarabia to Eight Nuri. Eight Nuri with a low ball to his left. Finds Lamina. Lamina overruns that and then the pass is intercepted. So that's a waste of an opportunity. Lamina feels terrible about it. So comes chasing back 70 yards and then it's given away by Sheaf. He didn't feel he really had an option there in the Coventry midfield. And Wolves have it again with Tommy Doyle. No, no, Tommy Doyle's just putting his foot on it because for a moment that game went end to end to end. And the players st stopped being able to support each other because they just run out of energy. I thought maybe if someone had just spotted the opportunity, the space opening up, they maybe would have had the ability to drive themselves. As it was, people were always looking for a pass. No one had the energy to support in that moment. Both teams just kept giving the ball away. Eight Nuri back to Totti for Wolves. Doyle uses Totti again. Totti's got Van Ervijk right in front of him. Back into his own half to Bueno. Bueno out to Sarabia. Lovely little layoff by Joao Gomez. Sarabia keeps moving forward. Lamina quickly on to Eight Nuri, just outside the Coventry area. Lata Bodier closed the space down quickly, makes the tackle. Is then hurt as he makes the tackle. So he slowly goes down, rubbing his left thigh. And when play resumes, we're going to have a Wolves throw on the left. 24 minutes in. Wolves nil, Coventry nil. Uh, Leon, in terms of watching Coventry live, what? what You've been impressed by them, first 24-25 I've been impressed, I've been impressed with their confidence, I've been impressed with 
the knowledge of, of what they're being asked to do, the distances between each other when they're attacking, when they're defending. There's just been a little bit of disappointment about not troubling the goalkeeper. I think that's probably the, the same for both teams. I think box to box, it's been a very competitive start to this game. I think the tempo has been excellent. I just don't think we've had enough uh, effort to goal. Playing for a place at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final. South Wales derby underway in the Championship. Swansea, Cardiff, Owen Gwyneth. Yeah, it's been all Swansea in the opening 10 minutes. The host certainly up for this one. Matty Grimes, powerful efforts, was well blocked, deflected wide uh, from the resulting corner. Harry Darling had a tame header, which was easily gathered by Carl Rushworth. But it's one-way traffic towards the Cardiff goal at the moment. Swansea nil, Cardiff nil. Big game in Cardiff, of course, uh, in the Six Nations. Wales, Italy kicks off at 2.15. Available to watch on BBC One Ireland, Scotland. Here on Five Live this afternoon. Coverage starts at half four on Sports Extra, then switches to Five Live after our commentary uh, of Luton against Nottingham Forest. Fulham, Tottenham in full on Sports Extra this evening. And France, England, final game in this season, Six Nations. Uh, also live on Five Live. And BBC Sounds tonight from 8 o'clock. Wolves nil, Coventry nil. 20 minutes to play in the first half. Sarabia onto the ball for Wolves and able to turn inside his own half. Gary O'Neill leaping around like a jack-in-a-box again in his black tracksuit beneath us, pointing to his left, wants Toddy to play that ball, which he does forward to eight Nuri. Lamina is the left winger, though. And Lamina just holding his left hand out, asking for a teammate to appear in space. Goes back to Totti. Doyle. Doyle to Bueno. Wolves inside their own half. Doyle just stops for a second. Casey Palmer about five yards in front of him for Coventry. Uses Bueno again to get out. And Wolves have worked the ball to the right over on the far side of the field as we look at it. In front of those thousands of Coventry fans stretched along the touchline in the lower tier of the Steve Bull stand. Diagonal ball from Semedo. Bounces on the edge of the Coventry area. Van Airvike is back there. Chests it down and then hooks it away on the turn. And it goes out for a throw into Wolves. Leon Osman. Yeah, really good track in that. They're trying to get Lamina in on that outside left channel again for the diagonal. Wolves are trying to cause Coventry all sorts of different problems with space. Sarabia is the main person. They're finding difficult to pick up. But then Ain't Nori's running into a central position. Rotating out wide is Lamina. Kilman's going to try a, an effort from long range. Bo blocked at close range by right. Cross in from Lamina from the rebound on the left. That's blocked at the near post. And that'll be a, a throw in for Wolves in an attacking position on the left. And they're ready to get going quickly. Cameraman moves in very close. Right behind Totti. Wolves Portuguese defender as he takes the throw. Doyle busy as ever, side foots a pass, back to Bueno, Bueno to Doyle, now there's a penalty in the National League, this game between Oldham and Chesterfield, Sonny Rodrovagela. And it's gone to the home side, Oldham Athletic have a penalty, James Norwood has put the ball down on the spot, remember that Chesterfield needs to win and Barnet to lose to go up from the National League back to the EFL, six successive seasons they've had in non-league, James Norwood steadies himself in his blue shirt, White shorts, hands on him. Nuri shots, blocked, and then Lamina swings with his right foot from the edge of the box, and the chance goes a begging for Wolves. That'll be a goal kick uh, for Coventry back to Sonny. And James Norwood has slotted the ball into the bottom corner. Bottom right it goes, Oldham are ahead. It's Oldham Athletic 1, Chesterfield 0. Thank you, Sonny. So Chesterfield needing the win if they are to be promoted today. Also needing Barnett to fail to beat Woking later on. But Oldham a goal to the good against Chesterfield. And Wolves with a good chance here to take the lead, Leon. Yeah, and I felt it was Coventry's own fault for getting themselves in that situation. It's just a long ball from Jose Saru who clearly can hit the ball the length of the field. It went all the way into Coventry's own penalty area. Goalkeeper Collins was rooted to his spot and I think the defendants, Th Thomas and, and Kitchen, were both expecting him just to come get the, the ball. Semedo does brilliantly, creates the opportunity, just tries to toe-poke it back, but somehow Coventry escaped. Wolves nil. Coventry nil, a couple of minutes shy of the half-hour mark in this first FA Cup quarter-final of the weekend. 5.30 tonight is Manchester City, Newcastle. We've got full commentary of Chelsea, Leicester tomorrow, which kicks off at 12.45, and Manchester United, Liverpool is at half three tomorrow afternoon. Here's Lamina, high, diagonal, into the penalty area, controlled by Sarabia, layback to Semedo! Save made by Collins at the near post, and then Bibwell's there to tidy up for Coventry and whack it away for a throw into Wolves. Oh, it's a tame finish, it's brilliant play from Wolves. You've got Lamina again, really out on this left-hand side, receiving the ball, cutting inside, diagonal to the far side of the pitch for Sarabia. 
He yeah. picked out Semedo, but it's a tame, tame finish. Coming again, Tommy Doyle looking for a 1-2 on the edge of the box with eight Nuri. Hadji Wright plays back towards the edge of the area. Semedo's onto it for Wolves, crossing with his right foot. Latter Bodier chests it back to his goalkeeper, Collins, who does well to quickly make the ground to his right stretch, keep the ball in play and hold on to it. And just buy Coventry a little bit of time and breathing space with Wolves enjoying a, a good little spell in this first half. Yeah, they are. They need that breathing space at the moment. A bit of concern on the face of, of Mark Robbins. As for Gary O'Neill, he's trying to get the referee to speed the play up again. As the game's gone on, Coventry have just tired a little bit. Wolves have found that those spaces, the, the slight concern for Wolves is who's going to score their goal? You know, you mm. look around who's on the pitch, who's got a real appetite for scoring goals. Someone needs to step up. Coventry have taken it off Wolves inside the Wolves half. Palmer running to his left, gives it to Wright. Bidwell wants it, supporting run on the outside, doesn't get it. Wright and Palmer play a couple of one-twos. Then Ben Sheaf involved, back to Wright again. Bit of space to work with. Walking pace at the moment. One-two with Bidwell again. Palmer lets the ball run across his body, back to the Wolves goal, 30 yards out. Bobby Thomas centre back onto it just inside the Wolves half so Wolves have forced Coventry back a little although Coventry still have the ball Kitching plays across to the left Sheaf running away from Sarabia back into his own half again forward from Thomas eight Nuri intercepts loose ball inside the Coventry half and then that's hoisted up in the air by Kitching Totties underneath it header away Lamina volleys it to his right and Bidwell had to win that header on the bouncing ball he did volleyed forward by Kilman Sarabia will chase that Kitching's there first heads it to Bidwell who immediately nods it back to Kitching who has to go chasing back towards the byline away to our left but is able to gather that ball for Coventry and then float a lofted pass onto the chest of Hadji right up by the halfway line Bidwell miscues on the half volley and the ball balloons out for a throw into Wolves on the right. So 14 minutes left in the first half. FA Cup quarter-final, live at Molyneux on the BBC. And it's Wolves nil, Coventry nil. Yeah, it's just become a little bit scrappy for Coventry. Not really finding it as easy to get the foot on the ball and, and keep possession and force Wolves back. The energy they use to try and go man-to-man -man at times against this Wolves team has just dropped off a little bit. Suddenly Wolves are finding gaps, that Premier League quality starting to, to show through. Swansea and Cardiff still goalless in the championship. Oldham leading Chesterfield by a goal to nil. Latter Bodier plays back to the edge of the Coventry penalty area. Here's Thomas. Thomas goes long. High ball up towards Sims, who enjoys the physical battle. Holds off Bueno. Plays it back to Van Ervijk. Tries to do too much with that. And Lamina's easily able to take it off him. Fraser does well. Lamina runs onto his layoff. Eccles is there for Coventry. Back to his goalkeeper, Collins. Low skidding clearance, which Palmer does well to control inside his own half. No foul on him, though. Here's Sarabia coming forward for Wolves. Plays it to the right to Joao Gomez. Low cross is cut out. Coventry are able to find Palmer. Palmer into the midfield, and then Latter Bodier comes charging onto the ball. Brings it across the halfway line, making a good move for Coventry and sees Van Ervijk in space on the right. Good ball in as well, Semedo volleys it away for Wolves, facing his own goal. That was a difficult one to deal with. Totti heads it up in the air, volleyed away by Doyle. Nathan Fraser, 19-year-old up front for Wolves, battling away for the ball, but he's lost it. And you can hear the encouragement from the Coventry fans here at Molyneux now. And here they come again down the right with Van Ervijk. Van Ervijk. Taking on Totti, low ball in, Kilman's there, first time clearance, throw in for Coventry. Yeah, they've looked a threat whenever they've moved the ball quickly, Coventry, especially when they've got the ball to this right-hand side for Anoa, and that's a brilliant delivery into the centre, and it took Semedo just getting in front of uh, Ella Sims at the far post to somehow flick it behind himself to stop Ella Sims being able to get a finish a goal. That's about a year with the throw. Back towards the halfway line it goes. Two centre-halves involved for Coventry. Kitching got it from Thomas. Kitching goes left to Bidwell. Back it comes to Kitching again. He's able to control the ball and then pings one forward to Palmer. Couldn't quite bring that under control. Doyle nicks it off him. Sarabia outside of his left foot. Offside flag goes up against Nathan Fraser, who is running into a whole world of space in behind the Coventry back line, but uh, was well offside. So Coventry will get themselves a free kick. Yeah, it was just clever from, from Thomas. He saw 
Fraser make the run early, just saw it, knew he didn't have to track it, stepped up, allowed him to run, ended up being about four or five yards offside, so an easy one for the assistant referee to give. Commentary take their free kick. Here's Thomas, Thomas forward to Van Eerwijk. Totti breathing down his neck. Slightly lucky with the pass. Wolves fans felt that Joao Gomez was blocked by the referee as he looked to get onto it. But Hadji Wright is onto the ball. Slips as he shoots, edge of the penalty area for commentary. All loose from Sarabia. Palmer shot. Saar stretches out a right arm saves. Bidwell's cross. Oh, Sims misses a sitter. Six yards out with the goal at his mercy. And he side-footed it straight at Jose Saar. Coventry should be ahead in the cup tie. Oh, what a big chance. That Coventry will look back on it. It should have definitely... Hit the back of the goal. Brilliant play from Coventry to find the moment. Casey Palmer with the shot. Good save. Bidwell, I think he confused his own striker as much as everything. He looked for all the world from the corner of the six-yard box. The left-back was coming in to just have a shot. Jose Sar set himself. Everybody seemed to stop, and he squared it to his striker. Ellis Sims, who just completely wasn't expected it, and miskicked it. Here come Wolves. Attacking down the right, Semedo into that Coventry area, doesn't quite get the trick right, and the ball runs into the legs of Bidwell and goes behind for a Wolves corner. Well, I was saying it earlier in the first half, the uh, brilliant form that Ellis Sims has been in. Eight goals in his last seven games, Saar with the palm out, cross in from Bidwell, and he is standing right in the middle of the six-yard box with Saar nowhere near him. And he skews the shot straight back at Saar, so it sort of hits the cross back where it came from, just miscues the side-footed finish. And that's why it remains. Wolves nil, Coventry nil. Corner for Wolves is a, a deep one from the right. Kilman attacks it, tries to nod it down, takes the last touch of a Coventry player, and that will be another Wolves corner. Chance brilliantly created by Coventry City. FA Cup winners in 1987. Last quarter-final for them, last time at this stage of the competition was 2009 under Chris Coleman, when they lost 2-0 at home to Chelsea. Nil-nil here against Wolves, Doyle to take this corner from the left, pace on that, flicked on at the near post, across the face of goal, and behind for a goal kick to Coventry. Swansea, Cardiff in the Championship, oh, I'm Gwyneth. Yeah, Swansea nil, Cardiff nil, but there was a potential red card. Coming together between Cardiff's Maita and Swansea's Harry Darling resulted in Maita in the aftermath potentially headbutting Darling, with Darling going down in dramatic fashion. Yellow card shown to both players, and earlier Harry Darling did hit the bar for Swansea from a free header, but it's still nil nil. Thank you, Owain. Premier League action this afternoon. Not too many Premier League games this weekend. Luton, Nottingham Forest is our commentary from three with all the goals as they go in as usual. Mark Warburton keeping Ian Dennis company at Kenilworth Road this afternoon. Burnley, Brentford also kicks off at three. Mas Faruqi with updates on that one. And then Fulham, Tottenham in full this evening on Sports Extra. Throw in for Wolves on the left. Manchester City, Newcastle, you can watch on BBC One and we'll have second half commentary of that FA Cup quarter-final. Uh, after the rugby is over in Dublin with Ireland trying to make it back-to-back -back Six Nations titles for them. Wales, Italy kicking off at 2.15. You can watch that on BBC One. You can listen to it on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Here's Totti. Totti for Wolves inside the Coventry half. Back to Doyle. Doyle gets his pass away to Kilman. Kilman across he goes to Semedo on the right. Sarabia back to Semedo. Semedo... Runs outside of Ben Sheaf, taking it right down this right-hand touchline, then into the shins of Bidwell, he passes the ball, and it goes behind for another Wolves corner, and that gets warm applause from the Wolverhampton Wanderers fans. Four times FA Cup winners, Wolves, 1960, the last time they lifted the trophy. Corner for them, which will come in from the right, left-footed delivery in towards the near post, two Coventry defenders there, Palmer and Bidwell they combine to get it away, Doyle nods it back to Semedo, Semedo hoists a high ball up in the air to the right Palmer jumps, wins the header Doyle holds off Eccles does really well to find Joao Gomez, Gomez continues a run, gets the ball back from Sarabia cross comes in, Nathan Fraser miscues tries to pick himself up to get a second shot away, Doyle was hurt has picked himself up, but Palmer's able to pass the ball past him. Gets it forward to Ellis Sims, and Sims has a bit of space to work with, charging at the Wolves' back line, up to the edge of the box. Great ball to Van Eerwijk, who shoots. Saar blocks, and it spins over the bar. And it's another incredible chance for Coventry that goes begging in the first half. 
Well, how happy Wolves will be. Jose Sarr has managed to stay on the pitch because this should have been yet again the opening goal for Coventry. It's a brilliant counter-attack through Ellis Sims mainly, who turns on the halfway line and just drives forward at the heart of the Wolves' defence. This time he had support. And Newick on that right-hand side. What good way to pass, touch. And he went for a low finish. It nearly went through the legs of Jose Sarr. It clipped them on the way through, bounced down and then agonisingly looped up over the crossbar. Brilliant chance for Coventry. They'll be out wondering why they're not ahead in this game. Two incredible chances for Coventry to take the lead. The championship team in this FA Cup quarter-final. Nil-nil at Molyneux. Corner comes in from the left. Glancing header from Bueno for Wolves across the face of his own goal. Goes behind for a corner. Another goal in the National League. Oldham Chesterfield, Sani Rodravagela. Well, this wasn't in the script. Dan Garner through on goal. Cool finish, giving Oldham a two-goal lead. The ice is definitely still on that champagne. It's now Oldham 2, Chesterfield 0. Thank you, Sani. Corner then for Coventry. Ellis Sims and Milan van Erwijk with two clear sights of Jose Sarr's goal and neither of them able to take the chance. Corner in front of the Sir Jack Haywood stand. Bidwell's delivery, Saar comes through a whole host of bodies, gets the punch away, nodded back by Palmer, smashed up in the air by Eccles. Huge up and under that belongs on the rugby field, that headed away by Totti. Ben Sheaf gets onto it for Coventry. Left-hand side of the Wolves half, good skill to beat Eight Nuri. Eight Nuri comes back at him, Sheaf holds onto it, then passes back here to Kitching. Kitching just knocks a short little pass to his right to fellow centre-back Bobby Thomas. Latibodier strokes one down the right for Van Erwijk. Back to Latibodier. Hadji Wright's made a little run on the turn inside the Wolves box. Back to Palmer. He's a lovely, skillful player for Coventry. Quick one-two with Latibodier. Good football being played by the championship team. Van Erwijk rolls his pass to Palmer. Palmer stops for a second just beneath our commentary position. Wide on the right for Coventry. Kitching to Palmer and Wolves forcing Coventry back and in the end they go all the way back to their goalkeeper Collins who quickly moves the ball to the left hand side and Coventry will change the angle of attack here's Sheaf Sheaf closed down by Doyle tight to the touchline on the left good skills from Sheaf to beat Doyle runs away from him brings the ball in field Palmer lays it off Sheaf is knocked to the floor Coventry continue playing Bidwell to Palmer not afraid to play it around Coventry here Palmer across to Eccles, they're moving walls about. Here's Latibodier. Latibodier looks up and sees Van Erwijk in space on the right. He'll have a chance to run at Semedo. Latibodier gets underneath the cross, not the best delivery. Easy header for eight, Nuri. Up in the air it goes. Thomas jumps with Fraser. Thomas wins it for Coventry, just nudges the ball back to Kitching. Coventry are able to try and put a bit of late pressure on Wolves at the end of this first half. Palmer thought about releasing the pass to Bidwell who was running down the left. Coventry though work it across to Latibodier. 30 yards out. Short little pass. Cross comes in from Sheath. Right jumps for it. Might fall to Sims. Lays it to Palmer. Volleys it straight at Saar. And that's an easy save for the Wolves keeper. Yeah, easy save for the goalkeeper. It was basically passed into his hand. He tried to side foot volley it into one of the corners and he just looped it straight into the goalkeeper's hands good bit of play, I mean they kept the ball there for a stretch of two, two and a half minutes inside the Wolves half Wolves couldn't get near Coventry there I wondered if they were going to have a finish at the end of it, they did and it was another good chance again that they've got to do better at Another goal at Oldham, Sani Rodravagela. Well, the away fans are singing Champions Elect. They are now 2-1 down. Bailey Hobson on his first start has halved the deficit. Still work for Chesterfield to do. It's Oldham 2, Chesterfield 1. Thank you, Sani. Swansea nil, Cardiff nil in the Championship. Approaching half-time at Molyneux here. Wolves nil, Coventry nil. Two glorious first-half chances for the Championship team. Lamina, though, up to the edge of the Coventry penalty area. Laid off to Eight Nuri. Eight Nuri doesn't see an option forward. Just had his heels clipped there as well as he played his pass. But he's involved again, Lamina's trying to find him, intercepted by Latibodier, Thomas's clearance, hits Eight Nuri's hand. Nothing Eight Nuri could really do about it, but he did block the clearance, and that is going to be a free kick for Coventry on the edge of their own box. Wolves nil, Coventry nil. Playing for a place in the FA Cup semi-finals. The draw, the semi-final draw, is going to be made tomorrow afternoon around about half five, or whenever the... Manchester United Liverpool game comes to an end. Early 6.06 tomorrow night, just to mark your card for that one, uh, from 5 o'clock uh, tomorrow night.
Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage taking the call, so that show will include that semi-final draw for the FA Cup and updates on the Manchester United against Liverpool FA Cup quarter-final. Sims holding off two Wolves defenders at once and winning a header, nods it down. Kilman clears it away, and that'll be a throw-in for Coventry on the halfway line. They've got to tell themselves, I guess, Leon, that they will they will fashion more chances similar to the amazing chances they fashioned in this first period. Oh, they've got to tell themselves that. They've got to be positive. You, you wonder, because um, Carrie O'Neill will be saying the other thing, they can't keep this up. We've got to now take advantage of the fact that they didn't take their opportunity. But there's no doubt that Coventry will feel they should be ahead in this game. They've defended well, their organisation's been good. They think they've restricted Wolves to one real shot at this point, although this could be an opportunity. Yeah, danger for Coventry now. Eight Nuri plays it to Lamina inside the penalty. A curling effort. Hits Sarabia. Fraser stretches. Ball's loose in the Coventry box. Fraser again tries to poke one towards goal. Knocks it well wide. And that'll be a goal kick for Coventry with two minutes of added time at the end of this first half. Yeah, half chance really. As Lamina, who's just basically played this first half as a, as a left winger, cuts in corner of the penalty area. He's trying to bend it far post in. Sarabia actually blocks it, he gets in the way, then there's a scramble, but I think that's been an issue for Wolves, and I said it earlier in the game, who's going to score the goals? There's 12 Premier League goals out there for this Wolves team, and if you're playing in a team like that, you're sometimes hoping that one of you is going to turn up and score the goal that's going to be important, and, and that's uh, that may be a mental issue. Yeah, Sarabia we know can do it, three goals already this season for the experienced Spanish international. 19-year-old Nathan Fraser is the centre-forward. Uh, Fraser's going to jump for a ball now just inside the Coventry half. He does have a couple of goals this season, one in the League Cup, one in the FA Cup, and has his chance at the moment because of all the injuries. Palmer's pass is not enough to reach Van Ayrvijk. Totti intercepts. Totti gets it from Eight Nuri, tries to beat Van Ayrvijk, knocks it infield to Eight Nuri, bounces off Palmer, and then Palmer is able to recover, win it for Coventry, and... Play it back to the edge of his own box. Early ball diagonal to Van Ayrvijk just beyond him. Totti was chasing hard and that'll be a throw in for Wolves in their left-back position. Ellis Sims and Milan Van Ayrvijk with two wonderful, wonderful opportunities to get Coventry in front in this first half. Jose Saar receives the ball on his own goal line. Closed down by Ellis Sims but calmly passes it out to the right to Semedo. Semedo uses Joao Gomez deep inside the Wolves half. Sarabia there in support. Pass forward with his left foot, half blocked by Eccles, it ran to Totti, Lamina with a little flick behind him, layoff from Aitnuri to Lamina again, uses Aitnuri in space on the left, Aitnuri's early cross into the penalty, just beyond Fraser, might reach Semedo, he couldn't control it, clumsy effort to try and control that ball at the far post, and that is the last action of the first half, as the ball runs off Semedo's shin, and it would have gone behind for the Coventry goal kick, and the only thing I think to talk about at half-time, Leon Osman with a score at 0-0, are those incredible chances missed by Coventry? Mark Robbins talking ahead of the game about the precious, rare opportunity that Coventry have to try and make an FA Cup semi-final. You've got to take chances like that. Oh, Coventry have been excellent. I mean, they've come here, they've not tried to sit back and hopefully try and get something. They've really took the game to this Wolves team. They've tried to force them back in possession. They've looked quite a good threat on the counter-attack as well. They've created the best opportunities in the game and Jose Sars made one excellent save, one that might not have even had to make the, the chance for maybe would have gone wide from Sims, but it's Coventry probably asking most of the questions inside the penalty areas. Wolves have been OK, box to box. They've looked uh, nice and pretty going through the, the, the thirds. They've got people in possession of the ball, but they've not really looked that cutting edge threat inside the penalty area. They're missing a lot of goals in their team today. No Neto, no Huang. And I think I'm seeing that. It's probably also the right juncture to remind you as well if we're level after 90 minutes, extra time and penalties to decide it on the day. Wolves nil, Coventry nil. I mean, we've got a lot to fit in today, Ali. We could we could do without that. <laughs> uh, not much I can do, Mark. Really? Just gonna sit I mean, could you not have a word at half-time? I could try. Well, Coventry need to take their chances. <laughs> they could be 2-0 up, couldn't well, they? That, well, that's exactly it, isn't it, Leon? I mean, they've played some really good stuff. You, you mentioned the two clear-cut ones. You, I mean, you could you could maybe throw Palmer's in there as well, where he just side-footed it into Jose Sar's hands. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's. Uh, I said it was a disappointing effort at the time. You've just got a twist. That's a side volley. Get your foot through it. You're probably what 11 yards out, 12 yards out on the angle. Just go and connect to it. And 
Yeah, they've, they've been impressive and it's been interesting watching the two managers, you know, opposite ends of, of their managerial career on the line as well. Gary O'Neill's been animated, encouraging, his arms are all over the place. Apart from the occasional clap at his team, Mark Robbins hasn't moved from the exact are spot. We call him Mark, are we calling Mark Robbins a veteran? I'm calling him an experienced oh. manager compared to Gary yeah. O'Neill. I think that's like me and you, Chappers. I'm still new to the game <laughs> and you're at least a veteran. <laughs> you horrible man. Thank you very much. <laughs> Second half on the way now. There's been a lot of rolling around in the South Wales derby, but now we've had a goal. Oh, I'm... Yeah, it's Swansea 1, Cardiff 0. And what a goal it was as well. A brilliant run down the right-hand side by Ronald. The January signing cuts back, floats the ball in and clean at the back post. Liam Cullen with a side-footed uh, finish into the bottom-hand corner. It's been all Swansea. They deserve the lead. It's Swansea 1, Cardiff 0. I mean, Owen, ha- Harry Darling's done very well to, to recover given how, given how he rolled around and went down <laughs> from Mitre's... Uh, face going into his nose yeah it's, you kind of hold back from calling it a head but don't you but there was a coming together there was a slight contact but he did go down like a sack of spuds um, and did roll around did his best maybe try a, a draw a red card but he's back on his feet and, he, and he's played well fair play to him uh, but that goal was definitely settled the nerves of the Swansea fans Swansea won Cardiff nil they lead Cardiff by a goal sale thank you very much good game in the National League Chesterfield if they win this and Barnet drop points against Woking at three o'clock. Chesterfield will be promoted, but they're not winning, Sonny. Uh, no, they're not at all. Yeah, really good game so far. Ten minutes till half time. It's Oldham Athletic two, Chesterfield one. It was James Norwood from the penalty spot to put Oldham ahead, and then Dan Garner threw on goal. A cool finish after 23 minutes. But Bailey Hobson, his first ever start for Chesterfield. He was on loan at Kidderminster in the first half of this campaign. He's halved the deficit. They're certainly coming back into it. Mark, this is my first National League game in a while, and I can tell you one observation: you can get away with a lot of fouls. At this level and the game seems to go ahead 10 minutes to go it's Oldham 2 they're, Chesterfield 1 they're, but they're not fouls Sandy they're just they're, well. ta- they're just normal tackles that would <laughs> that are given as fouls yeah. higher up the football pyramid so, yeah some some are completely I've seen one or two players completely <laughs> cleaned out and nothing's been given and yeah there's a couple of yellows that haven't been given whatsoever don't bring the VAR internationally whatever you do by the way <laughs> thank you very much Sandy Rajavagula at Boundary Park for Oldham against Chesterfield combining the football in the Six Nations today uh, so it, Wales Italy is on Sports Extra. A base from three is Luton, Nottingham Forest in the Premier League. Then we've got commentary of Ireland, Scotland in the Six Nations with Ireland uh, looking to win the Six Nations by beating Scotland. Then we've got the FA Cup tie between Manchester City against Newcastle. And then we go back to the Six Nations for the final game of this year's tournament, France against England, which is an eight o'clock kickoff. There is a lot to get in today on Five Live. Seven minutes past one, Beth Ann Holmes has your news. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Vaughan Gething will become the next leader of Welsh Labour and the First Minister of Wales when his predecessor, Mark Drakeford, steps down next week. In his, in his acceptance speech, he said it was an honour to become Europe's first black leader and said the Welsh people were turning a page in history. Devolution. Welsh solutions to Welsh problems and opportunities is in my blood. It's what I've always known through my adult political life. And that's the same for a growing number of our citizens. And I want us to use this moment as a starting point for a more confident march into the future. A march into the future on behalf of a generation that too often is being asked to pick up the pieces and the bill for those who came before them. A U.S. charity says its team has completed the unloading of almost 200 tonnes of food in the first aid delivery by sea to Gaza. World Central Kitchen had to build a jetty to the South Gaza city in order to facilitate the operation. Sainsbury's has apologised as it won't be able to fulfil the vast majority of its online deliveries today because of problems caused by an overnight software update. Argos, which is owned by Sainsbury's, is also affected. And drivers are facing delays on the UK's busiest motorway, the M20. A five-mile stretch between 10 and 11, those are the junctions 10 and 11, is closed all weekend until Monday morning, so a bridge can be demolished. Choosing what to watch. Night after night. Um, The flicking through. The endless searching. It's a nightmare. We want to help you. 
On our brand new podcast, Off the Telly, we share what we've been watching. Gladiators. <laughs> Real people, loads of games, loads of fun, loads of screaming. <laughs> Lovely. Off the Telly with me, Joanna Page. And me, Natalie Cassidy. So your evenings can be a little less searching. And a lot more watching. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Goalless in the FA Cup quarterfinal between Wolves and Commentary. Back at Molyneux shortly. Let's focus on the first Six Nations uh, match of the day. Wales against Italy. Wales trying to avoid the wooden spoon. And it will also be a final game for George North after the Welsh centre announced his international retirement this week. It's not an easy decision for me. It's not, it's not being an easy decision at all. It feels like the right time now for me personally. Um, I've been very fortunate to live a dream that not many people get to do. And like, it's dusty in here, isn't it? <laughs> and um, it's the aircon. It's the aircon. Yeah, it's sort of ramped right up here. Yeah. And um, and for me, um, I think when you know, you know. And uh, sometimes that's not that's not the right answer. And the answer that is the um, the fairy tale answer or the fairy tale finish. But um, like to be able to do it at home in front of a sold out stadium with my family around me seems like the best you know and the, um, the best way for me to essentially to live my dream again one more time Molly Stevens is at the Principality he's not going to want to go out on a defeat and a wooden spoon though is he he is absolutely not no he's 121st and final Wales appearance should certainly put some fire in the bellies of the Wales players here Mark to sign off this championship on a high and record their first win of course in 12 Six Nations games believe it or not ironically the last time they won one was against Italy this time last year Italy Meanwhile, they're here in Cardiff full of confidence after their first win in 11 years at home last weekend against Scotland. Wales number eight, Aaron Wainwright, said this week it would be embarrassing to win the wooden spoon, but someone's got to take it and it'll be the loser here today. Kick off at 2.15. Yeah, and you can listen to that on Sports Extra this afternoon. You can watch it on BBC One. Our base from three is Kenworth Road, Luton. Against Nottingham Forest, Ian Dennis will be there for us. Just three points separate the two sides. Although, really, Ian, if Luton could have held on to a 3-0 lead at Bournemouth, they'd have been above Forest. I know, that was a real hammer blow, wasn't it? Throwing away that 3-0 lead in uh, in midweek. Um, I was listening to Rob Edwards in his press conference yesterday. He said that they, you know, they'd stayed down on the south coast. They, they tried to deal with the disappointment, recover from it and then bounce back but the proof will be in the pudding. I mean, in many ways, Mark, this, I know there's the cliche about it's a six-pointer. Oh, you're not going there, are you? Well, no, but this is the closest thing to it when you consider that the likely points deduction for Forrest and Everton. If Forrest were to win this, they'll be six points clear and when I think, and we're getting very, very close now to uh, some news from the Premier League because the time frame is is from the 14th, 15th of January, so mid-January, the Commission had sort of like a, a 12-week window to assess the uh, the situations for Forrest and Everton. Now, that would take you to the 8th of April. So, in you know, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to get news from the Premier League. There I are murmurings, aren't there, that it could be this week? There, there have been murmurings, yeah. Um, I mean, the, it's, it's in everybody's interest to get it done because once... But I'm saying... The latest it can be is that eight, the 8th of April. They've got that 12-week window, so it but might they be that they... they can't, can they? They can't leave it till the 8th of April. You're, you're then five weeks from the end of the season. I mean, you just, you just completely change everything at that stage. I mean, I'm not saying even making the decision now is that much better, but at, at least that gives you a, a couple of months as a club to assess the situation. I mean, you cause carnage from the 8th of April, don't you? But, but well, the, the time frame would be they've got... The 12-week window takes you to the 8th of April, so it might be that they can deliver it the news next week, but I'm just saying that's, that's, that is sure, the 12-week sure. window. And then the clubs have got seven days to appeal, but the backstop date is the 24th of May. So it's got to be done and dusted by the, the Premier League's AGM the appeal. by the 24th of May. So, well, both, both clubs have, 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 have admitted that they have breached the, uh, the financial fair play rules. That would they appeal if, say, for instance, I don't think it would... The precedent has been set with Everton from their... already been hit by six points. You know, if the Premier League were to give them, say, a 10-point deduction, yes, I think they'd appeal. If they were to give them six points, would they appeal? 
possibly. If it was any less, would they then take it on the chin? That's, that's what the clubs have got, got to decide in that seven-day period. But the Premier League, I don't think, would put themselves in a situation where the, 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 I think the precedent for six points is something that they can stick to because the Premier League wouldn't want to be in a scenario where after the final ball is kicked, then they've got to try and amend the league table. They'd want it all done and dusted going into that final weekend in an ideal situation. But this isn't an ideal situation. So... Um, it's you know, far from an ideal situation. Yeah, it's the uh, it's it's the caveat. But my point being is that if Forest were to win, then they do go six points clear of Luton Town, and that's why I was suggesting that this is the closest thing to the cliche of uh, it was rather long winded <laughs> of, of, of a six pointer. Yeah, that feels like about five minutes ago we started. Well, it, that. it didn't help because you kept interrupting. Well, I just kept asking you questions. <laughs> 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 I mean, it, it, the the mentality of Luton will be interesting here, won't it? Pa- partly because of that defeat at Bournemouth and how they threw that away. And also, as we talk about many times, it kind of feels like there's more pressure on them today because there is an expectation. Yeah. Um, and also, it's it's how... I mean, Rob Edwards is saying, yeah, we've dealt with it. It'll be great to bounce back, you know, the spirit in the, in the team. But they've got a lot of injuries. They've got nine players out. Um but they have done very, very well here at Kenilworth Road. And if they are to give themselves a, a fighting chance, it will be their home form. I mean, both teams, actually, their, their away form in the Premier League is, is pretty wretched for both Luton and Nottingham Forest. Although, if you look at the fixtures for Forest, they've got five away games left. If you include this one, they've got Luton, Everton, Sheffield United and Burnley. So, in that respect, Forest face is very much in, in their own hands. Uh, but for Luton Town, you just think that there's only one team who's kept a clean sheet here all season, that was Spurs. So you just think that it's going to be Luton's home form that will give them that fighting chance of, uh, of survival. It's just such a shame that they couldn't hang on to the, uh, to the lead at, at Bournemouth on Wednesday night. Um, the, the other three o'clock game at Turf Moor, Burnley uh, against Brentford. Now, now Burnley are, are much further back in this relegation battle, uh, 14 points. So they're seven adrift of Luton, they're 10 adrift of Nottingham Forest. But this actually is big from Brentford's point of view, who who will be looking a little bit over their shoulders. I know there may be points deductions coming for Everton and Nottingham Forest, but Luton with a win will get themselves to within two points of Brentford. Brentford only five points above the drop zone. Yeah, um, I mean, the target for most clubs will be thirty six points. So Brentford have got ten games remaining, and they need another ten points to get to that margin. But they're not a team in form. Five without a win, one win in eight. Burnley have the worst home record in the Premier League. And, you know, you look at Burnley and Sheffield United, both on 14 points. Very, very difficult for both of those two teams to get out of it. So you're looking at them one remaining place. And, and Brentford at the minute are still on that periphery. Um, and that's why, once we know the, the points deduction, it might become a little bit clearer. Uh, but I still believe that Brentford will manage to eke themselves out of trouble, All right. despite their indifferent form. We'll be back for the six-pointer later, yes? Why is it a six-pointer? No, it's all right. Fortunately, the teams are back out at Molyneux. Alistair Bruce Ball. (laughs) Thank you, Mark. Second half about to get underway. The first FA Cup quarter-final of the weekend and Coventry City of the Championship trying to become the first Championship team to make the semi-finals of the FA Cup since Reading did it back in 2015. Nil-nil at half-time, but the two best chances of that first half very definitely fell uh, to Coventry. Van... Airvike's shot one-on-one with Jose Sar, very nearly went through the keeper's legs, but there was a deflection on it, and it went up over the bar, and Ellis Sims from close range somehow missing the target, inside footing it back towards Jose Sar, who was stranded on his right-hand post, although as Leon Osman spotted in a couple of the replays, VAR may well have got involved had that ball ended up in the back of the net for a potential offside in the build-up to it. Tommy Doyle is caught early on with a heavy challenge just inside the Coventry half, so Wolves will get a free kick. That gives me a chance to just remind you of the two team lineups. So Wolves have Jose Sarr in goal, uh, Nelson Semedo, Rayan Eight Nuri as the wing backs, although it's chopping and changing a bit for Wolves. Santiago Bueno, Max Kilman, and Totti, the other three defenders. Joao Gomez, uh, Tommy Doyle in central midfield. Mario Lamina has been playing wide left in this game so far. Pablo Sarabia on the right, and 19 year old Irish striker Nathan Fraser through the middle. Coventry have Bradley Collins in goal. Uh, Latter Bodier at right back. Bobby Thomas and Liam Kitching are the two centre backs. Jake Bidwell 
uh, on the left. Josh Eccles and Ben Sheaf with Casey Palmer ahead of them. Uh, Van Erwijk and Hadji Wright either side of the centre forward. Ellis Sims. Doyle's free kick up into the commentary penalty area. Eight Nuri tries to take the ball on. The first touch runs beyond him and beyond the dead ball line. And it goes behind for a goal kick to Coventry. And Leon, you were... Also looking at the two benches at half-time, I'm going to come back to that point in a second because the half-time whistle has blown in the championship, Owen Gwynett. Yeah, it's been a full throttle 45 minutes here, that's Swansea in the South Wales derby, with a host dominating nearly every facet of play and deserving their lead. Liam Cullen's 34th minute goal, uh, the difference at the half. And must be said, Cardiff lucky to be still with 11 on the field. Uh, question is, how much energy do Swansea have in the second half after that performance? Swansea 1, Cardiff 0. Two minutes gone, second half here at Molyneux, Wolves nil, Coventry nil, Coventry playing out from the back, good pace on the ball to Bidwell, Bidwell's pass finds Palmer in the inside left channel, he goes wide, beats Doyle, beats Samedo, Palmer still rolling along, edge of the penalty area, little pass into the feet of Hadji Wright, back to goal inside the box, Bidwell stands up the cross, headed away by Kilman, uh, Sarabia stretches, gets a good touch on the ball, knocks it round Bidwell, and then in the right back position, clears four Wolves up the right-hand touchline, Fraser chest control the last touch apparently came off Kitching it'll be a Wolves throw but in terms of the strength of the two benches Leon you were making the point weren't you because of the Wolves injuries even though Coventry are the championship team relatively Mark Robbins probably has more more options there in terms of players he could really trust yeah I mean with talking about can Co Coventry sustain this level that they're playing at the energy that they're putting into it and then yeah we start looking at the changes Mark Robbins can make, yeah, I think they possibly can. Oh, siding run from eight. Nuri right-footed shot wide of the target. Brilliant run. Slaloming in between Coventry midfielders. Up to the edge of the box he went. The chance presented itself. Left-footed player. Shot came with the right foot and sliced it wide. Yeah, and you can see the disappointment on his face. I know it was on his weaker right foot, but he's from just inside the D. Centre of goal. And he's just sliced across it a bit. But he's looked most lively, I think whether to score or create the opening goal for Wolves today. He's not really played out on that left-hand side very often, but, uh, yeah, he's been a threat. Scored four Wolves in the 2-1 win against Fulham last weekend. Had she right for Coventry to Van Erwijk inside the Wolves penalty area trying to beat Totti on the outside cross comes in Kilman header only as far as Palmer inside the Wolves area half tackled Sheaf chests the ball down for Coventry uh, he's chased by Semedo and Sarabia barged to the floor it's seen by Semedo the referee Sam Barrett happy with that though Coventry have won the ball back inside the Wolves half and the second half has kicked off at a real pace here as the Ball is played forward to Sims. Sims holds on to it, but then can't find Van Erwijk with the pass. Totti clears, and there's actually going to be a free kick for Wolves inside their own half for a foul on Lamina. Half-time in the National League now. Oldham Chesterfield kicked off at half-12. Sani Rodravagela. Well, Chesterfield need to win, and Barnet to slip up to go up, but they are 2-1 down at the break. Goals from Norwood and Gardner. The deficit halved by Hobson, but it need to work in the second half. It's Oldham 2, Chesterfield 1. Uh, fantasy football deadline about eight minutes away, Leon, but uh, judging by all the work you were doing in the press room before the game, we're OK, aren't we, for that? Yeah, I forgot until you walked in, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Fantasy Football, and then a draft, draft, maybe changes very quickly. Actually right, edge of the penalty for Coventry. It's a good hit with the right foot. Jose Sardo was confident it was always missing the target. It does, and that's a goal kick for Wolves. The Coventry have started the second half as the... Played for most of the first half on the front four, in between the lines, trying to create opportunities. I was saying to a half-time, maybe be that if Coventry start this half well, if they get 10 or 15 minutes, get to the hour mark, in control of this game still, this crowd will start to get nervous. They'll start to be a little bit of, of worry. They'll start to be those doubts that surely we're not going to get beat at this stage. We've come so close and... That can only play into Coventry City's hands. Wolves, ninth in the Premier League, having won four of their last five games in all competitions, but Coventry, eighth in the Championship and playing well too. And they've been a real match for Wolves so far this afternoon and they've really come out with a snap and a fizz, Coventry, at the start of this second half. Van Erwijk working in tight spaces. Latter Bodier is hacked down there by Sarabia. So that'll be a, a Coventry free kick, which they're going to take quickly. Back it comes... To Ben Sheaf, the skipper, running across the halfway line, plays it to the shaven headed left back, Jake Bidwell, the man who started out at Everton, has played his football for 
Brentford QPR and Swansea. Leon nods on in approval. Yeah, I think I played the game he made his debut in for Did Everton. you? Yeah, a, a, a European tie, I think it was. Yeah, right. And here he is at left back trying to get Coventry into only a second ever FA Cup semi final. Ellis Sims, another former Everton man, joined Coventry this summer. Apart from the miss, has done a really good job at centre forward for Coventry. He is proving a real handful for Wolves. He's won another free kick. Yeah, that's his game. He was, as I said, he was at Everton as a youngster. I saw him up close. He's a guy that probably is at his best when he's got people around him. An old-fashioned centre-forward. There's a real handful for defenders, but does generally have an instinct for scoring goals. He'll be very disappointed by that opportunity that went his way in the away in the first half. But yeah, right, he's led the right line really, really well. Classic number nine who wears number nine in the sky blue of Coventry, attacking the goal away to our left with the free kick. Palmer curls it into the Wolves box, nodded down. Cross goal should be finished. It's ended up in the back of the net. Ellis Sims gets the final touch. The flag stays down. And the championship team, Coventry, are in the lead in this FA Cup quarter final. Ellis Sims with the hat trick in the fifth round against Maidstone has now scored at Molyneux and the Coventry fans are going absolutely berserk. Wolves nil, Coventry won. Well, we're just talking about him. Old-fashioned centre-forward, likes the hustle and bustle of the game, but knows where the goal is. And this is a set-piece, we'll just check for offside. No, I was worried. I thought that maybe Kitching had gone early, he didn't. It's a brilliant set piece. It's the exact same set piece that they tried in the first half. We all thought they were going to have an effort to goal. They didn't. They floated it towards the far post. The centre halves, Kitchen and Thomas, are both trying to get after it. They're fighting over each other to see who gets to it first. And then, as the ball is headed across the goal, I think it's Lata Baudier that's in there. He maybe gets a slight touch on it before it then comes off Ellis Sims, and they may have to check that part for offside, it all having such a close area. Offside, Leon, and, and I'm just wondering potential handball as well. We're waiting for the game to kick off again. Lamina was at the back post for Wolves. I'm wondering whether the final touch came off him, but did it come via Sims' arm? Checking goal for a possible handball. Oh, and I think this is Sims challenging for the ball at the far post. You're right about Latabodier stretches, comes off his shin. Does it hit Sims on the arm before oh. it ends up in the back of the net? Bro, it's... it's... It's a close. He's got Totti all over his back and he's just fighting him to try and keep him away, to try and make sure that the Wolves defender can't get to the position to clear the ball and just about to see it again as it comes up, does it? I think that I think that's as much. Oh. Is that Totti's arm in between? Maybe it hits <laughs> Totti's arm, then Ella Sims' arm. It does maybe look from that angle it, like it hits Sims' arm. Yeah, the arms in that image are kind of meshed together and because it's bare arms you can't actually see the colour of the shirt Lamina and uh, it's Totti I beg I mean, your pardon it, isn't it and Sims so I mean if it comes together. off Sims' arm they're probably going to disallow it but if it comes off Totti's arm onto Sims' arm oh, yeah. the, how would the ruling be there because it's I wouldn't say it's a penalty kick no 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 goal goal if, if, if that's the case it's whether Sims has handballed it well this is a grey area because I think that it's Totti's arm first before it then rolls up onto Sims' arm the ruling is if it hits the striker's arm and then goes directly in, it's yeah. it's not given as a goal. But if it hits a defender's arm and then directly hits the striker's arm and goes in, I have no idea what the ruling would be on that. Mark Chapman's not going to be a happy man about this. He was telling us how busy we are this afternoon, all the sport we've got to get to, and this is taking a little bit of a while. But it's a big goal in a big game, and referee Sam Barrett is waiting for the video assistant referee Graham Scott and his team to rule on the footage we are watching time and time and time again. They have got to be absolutely certain if they are going to change the decision on the field. Well, I think I think it does hit the arm of, of Sims. I'm seeing it again. I think it does hit the arm of Sims. And if that's the case, yeah. it's probably going to be ruled out, but it would be ever so unlucky because... As I say, I think it hits Totti's arm, elbow first, before it hits Sims. And again, I certainly wouldn't think you give a penalty kick for that because it's... This is like the... Uh, there's a Brudder film in the JFK where we just keep watching the same bit of footage again and again yeah. and again and again. And actually where Coventry may get unlucky here is Latter Baudier's touch diverts it up onto Sims' arm. Yeah. Had he not gone for that ball, I think Sims, Sims is just in the tapping back it in. Yeah. But, but Latter Baudier's got to go for that, hasn't yeah, he? You, yeah, you would say so. I mean, seen it over and over again. Two hand balls. The two hand is two wrongs make a right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think 
but ultimately it's taken a long long I think it time. should be a goal I just don't know I, I'm not sure I agree with my own reasoning <laughs> behind why it should be a goal because Coventry you feel have played so well and deserve a goal and deserve to get in front but they can't make the decision can they obviously on on that basis right Sam Barrett is being spoken to now he's trying to cut out all the noise holding both hands to his ears as the message is relayed from Stockley Park our Coventry going to have the lead in this game Sam Barrett referee is nodding his head blows his whistle the goal's given Ellis Sims gets the goal if indeed it was the final touch from him whether it ends up going in off Totti and his own goal Coventry fans will not care they're in front in the FA Cup quarter final it took an absolute age to get to the eventual decision but the bottom line is Wolves nil Coventry won oh the drama of VAR oh, be beat. well it certainly helped Coventry on this occasion and I think the way they played the game they certainly deserve to be in front Sarabia is far from happy with the referee he's fuming still was throwing his arms up towards the referee I don't think they've seen it back though I don't think they've seen it from the angles that we've seen it and even I was struggling to decide on the actual law behind what had happened so I think both teams know now the goal's been given Wolves have got to come from behind Coventry of the championship leading Wolves by a goal to nil Coventry having played previously in seven FA Cup quarter-finals and lost six of them, the only one they've ever won back in 1987 when they beat Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough by three goals to one. Cyril Regis and Keith Houchin uh, with two. Went on to win the Cup that year. Cross comes in to the Coventry penalty area. Lamina chests it down, works it onto his right foot. Half tackled, still has the ball. And eventually Coventry get enough bodies there. Lamina comes back to win it. He challenges Van Ayrvike, goes down. Wolves keep the ball in play. Suddenly pressure on Coventry, but Sarabia's cross is blocked by Latte Baudier on the corner of the penalty area. And Ellis Sims does brilliantly for Coventry to win a free kick wide on the right, just inside the Coventry half. Wolves nil. Coventry won. Yeah, good play from the striker. Sims is get again nowhere really to go. Two yards away from the touchline, held the ball up well, won his team a free kick. But Harry O'Neill quick to react to what's happened. Double substitution. Yeah, Nathan Fraser, 19-year-old centre forward, coming off for Wolves, but 18-year-old striker Leon Chiwome is coming on for a first-team debut. Joined the club as a 16-year-old back in 2022, previously at AFC Wimbledon, and gets thrown into an FA Cup quarter-final with Wolves needing to get themselves back in the tie. Totti is off and Matt Doherty is on. Matt Doherty, the only man in this Wolves squad that played in the FA Cup semi-final for them back in 2019. And there they really were close to going all the way to Wembley for the final 2-0 up against Watford in that game eventually lost it in extra time brilliant goal from Gerard Delafeu after Troy Deeney's late penalty uh, made it 2-2 and took it into extra time although eventually Watford in that final got absolutely trounced 6-0 by Manchester City so yeah. Wolves may have been grateful for not making it through to the final but it's Wolves nil, Coventry 1 and this really could be some story if Mark Robbins takes Coventry to an FA Cup semi-final Leon yeah, I was just going to say that you know, Gary O'Neill made that substitution. Doherty straight up to eight nor telling him not only is he playing left back, little message of paper in his hands to tell him what were they doing. Right, space is opening up for Coventry on the counter attack here. 15 minutes gone in the second half. They lead by a goal to nil. Hadji right into the Wolves penalty area, down by the byline, looking for a teammate. Gets the cut back and the shot is high in the air from Van Ayrvike and goes wide of the target as well. Goal kick for Wolves. I guess, I guess, Leon, and you were looking at those replays time and time and time again. They had to be absolutely certain that it had struck the arm of Ellis Sims to rule that goal out. Because if it does, you know, strike the hand of the striker who is directly involved in the goal, those do get ruled out. But if they couldn't be absolutely sure that it was his arm, because we couldn't, could we? I've been, I'm really, I would say, looking forward, but interested to see the ruling yeah. that comes out on, on, on that decision that was made. I personally thought it did hit the arm of yeah. Sims but I did think it hit the arm of the Wolves defender Totti first and you know it's such a grey area uh, Doyle playing the ball back for Wolves so Wolves have some work to do last half hour of the game trailing Coventry by a goal to nil and Coventry on the balance of chances created in the game deserve this lead Semedo to Sarabia 
Sarabia, side footed pass. Across the area to Joao Gomez. Eight Nuri forward. Dummies a shot on the edge of the penalty area. Back to Joao Gomez. Wall of sky blue shirts with the vertical white stripes in front of them as Sarabia's cross comes in. Headed away by Kitching. The ball nearly squirms through the legs of Joao Gomez. He's able to take control. Eccles sticks out a leg. Catches Joao Gomez. He's very happy to go down and win the free yeah. kick for Wolves on the edge of the box because yeah. he wasn't really going anywhere there. Very happy to go down. It was exactly what he was looking for. A little bit naive from Eccles just to dangle a leg. He didn't do much, I've got to be honest. Just treads on his toe a little bit. Could have stayed at his feet. But the position he's in, decided to go down. But Wolves have, have changed their tempo. You can instantly feel it. The crowd are desperate to get the team forward. There's more intensity to the runs forward. They've been leaving themselves 2v2, 3v3 at the back to get their overloads themselves and they've certainly pushed this Coventry team back. Wolves nil, Coventry won. FA Cup quarter-final. Very busy sporting weekend. You'll be on the move at some point. BBC Sounds app, if you've not got it already, the place to listen to Five Live and Sports Extra. Wales, Italy and the Six Nations coming up on Sports Extra. Kicks off at 2.15. This, though, Wolves Coventry, FA Cup quarter-final. Coventry leading by a goal to nil. Free kick for Wolves. Head to the penalty area, Tommy Doyle with his right foot, just over the bar, and into those Wolves fans in the Sir Jack Hayward stand behind the goal. Good strike, just couldn't get it down in time. Yeah, it didn't lack for power, and he went goalkeeper side, he didn't go over the wall. You're right, just set it off a yard too high. I think the keeper may have even struggled, such was the power, had it been right in that top corner, but didn't get it down in time Swansea leading Cardiff by a goal to nil in the championship in the National League Oldham 2 Chesterfield 1 Chesterfield if they're going to be promoted today actually need to win that game and hope that Barnett then fail to beat Woking Luton Nottingham Forest is our Premier League commentary this afternoon from 3 o'clock with Ian Dennis and Mark Warburton and they will keep you across everything that is going on in the football up and down the land Ireland Scotland uh, will follow on 5 Live in the Six Nations coverage starts on Sports Extra at half four, Fulham Tottenham in full on Sports Extra, that game kicks off at half five in the Premier League Sarabia, little pass around the corner to Joao Gomez, run being made by Chiwomi, a cross comes in from Gomez, headed away, Palmer tries a clever flip, too clever though, he's caught by Doyle Doyle's cross, blocked by Sheaf ball spins up in the air, Joao Gomez is there tries to find Doyle, Sheaf clears with his left foot, Hadji Wright's run is blocked but Sims is there for Coventry, Kilman comes across to cover it, Sims drags him to the floor and it's a free kick for Wolves 25 minutes, 26 minutes plus added time to be played, Coventry leading 1-0. Yeah, and as Wolves are pressing forward, they're leaving those moments there, if Coventry get it right on the counter attack, they nearly had 2v1, if Ellis Sims could have just held it up and turned the other way he would have been able to re release right through on goal. Lamina on the left, into the feet of the 18-year-old Chiwome, wriggling for space, another shot comes in, but the last touch came off a Wolves player, and it goes behind for a goal kick to Coventry. Got in the space, brilliant there, Chiwome, and he got turned well, he just took one touch too many to try and make sure he had that space in the penalty area, rather than touch and finish, and maybe you can get it through defenders' legs, and... And he was also unfortunate that the Lamina shot hit him on the way out. Last championship team to make the semi-finals of the FA Cup, Reading in 2015. Leicester will have a go at it tomorrow. They're away at Chelsea. Commentary on that quarter-final. 12.45 kick-off in five live sports tomorrow. The game is also available on BBC One. And you can watch Manchester City Newcastle tonight in the FA Cup on BBC One. We'll have second-half commentary of that. After the rugby is finished in Dublin, we've also got full commentary of France against England to round off uh, the Six Nations this evening. Last championship team to actually make the FA Cup final, Cardiff back in 2008, who lost to Portsmouth. And the last team from the second tier to win the FA Cup, and I know everyone's screaming at their radios going, I know, I know, West Ham back in 1980 with the Trevor Brooking header. Sims, little flick here, looking for Wright. Wright is tackled, and the ball runs to Jose Sarr. Real urgency, as you'd expect about everything that Wolves are trying to do at the moment. Jose Sarr, who went down with a, an injury off the ball in the first half, but has continued in the game, just rolls it out to the feet of Doyle. Doyle, who was involved in late drama in the quarterfinals last season with the winner against Blackburn for Sheffield United, ball over the top for Chiwome to chase, he slips though and it runs harmlessly through to Bradley Collins, the Coventry keeper who's not been forced into action enough by Wolves during the game, Ben Sheaf 
Coventry's captain, Palmer, brilliant ball through to Hadji Wright, another opportunity for Coventry, inside the Wolves box, right onto his right foot, drives the shot, it's blocked, spins loose, Eccles runs onto it, low drive from him, Saar makes the save down to his left, it'll come back to Eccles again, stands the cross up to the far post, right header, softly into the arms of Jose Saar, Leon Osman. Absolutely brilliant football to watch. Coventry coming again, Palmer's curler! Oh, just wide. I was certain he was going in. Wolves gave it away on the edge of the box. Sheaf passed it to Palmer, and he just tried to delicately curl it beyond a flat-footed Jose Sarr. He cannot believe he's missed. Oh, well, Wolves fans are going mad. Can't believe what they're seeing. Coventry fans have all got their hands on their head. That was probably four clear-cut chances to have scored the next goal in this game. I can't actually believe that at least one of those didn't find the back of the goal in... At this stage and these moments, how crucial could that be? Coventry are pushing forward, they look like they can score. You have to get that second goal. Wolves nil, Coventry one. Penalty at Swansea, Owen Gwyneth. Yeah, penalty to Swansea as well. The ball's been placed on the swat by Liam Cullen, the goal scorer in the first half. Perry Engi, who's been brilliant all season at Cardiff, pulling back Ronald down the left-hand side. Clear-cut penalty. As the penalty taker steps up, cools himself, slots it to the left. Oh, and it's wide. He's missed. Liam Cullen has put it wide left of the goal. Score remains a Swansea 1, Cardiff 0. Callum O'Hare getting ready to come on for Coventry. A quarter of this cup quarter final remaining. Wolves 0, Coventry 1. Free kick coming Coventry's way as well. And now Sheffield United fans are now going to be screaming at their radios who reached the FA Cup semi finals as a championship team uh, last season. I was talking about the very goal, of course, from Tommy Doyle that did that job for them. Bidwell's uh, ball into the penalty area. The Wolves penalty area is headed away uh, by Gomez. Here's eight Nuri running it out of his own half, wide to Lamina, Coventry have found new levels of energy now, chasing everything down, tackled by Kitching, the centre half, who's over on the right wing there to rob Aitnuri of possession, and that is going to be a throw-in for Wolves in their left-back position. So Callum O'Hare uh, comes on, who, uh, former Aston Villa player, now in his fourth season at Coventry, and it's a like-for-like -like change, Leon. It's not a defensive change, because O'Hare is a... A lovely player on the ball, a bit like Casey Palmer. Palmer's coming off, O'Hare's coming on to do the same job. Yeah, he's had a good game, Palmer. I think he's got about the pitch well. I think he's been dangerous. He's played some lovely through balls, got on the hard term really well. But as I mentioned, they're, they're being asked to get through an awful lot of work, these Coventry players. At the minute, it's working. And if you can make a like-for-like -like change, get the energy levels back up, keep the quality that you're putting out there high, then, yeah, it's an easy change for the manager to make. Won't be the first one to draw the comparisons with Callum O'Hare and Jack Grealish. O'Hare is a former Villa player as well. Hair slicked back, socks rolled down. Lovely ball player in the number 10 role. Where's the number 10 for Coventry? Championship side Coventry, just over 20 minutes away from taking their fans to Wembley for the second season running. Of course, beaten on penalties in the playoff final by Luton last season. Otherwise, could have been a Premier League team this season. Pushing for the playoff spots again. This time around, eighth in the championship, a point behind Norwich and Hull, six points behind West Brom in fifth. But here, most importantly, leading Wolves by a goal to nil in this FA Cup quarter-final. Latter Bodier goes scampering across his own half, can't keep the ball in play, throw in for Wolves on the left. Well, they don't want to do that, Coventry. They don't want to try and keep the possession of the ball in their own half, move it around, give Wolves the opportunity to press them, be a bit sloppy. They've been very successful and they've got the ball forward to their striker and got the ball wide to right or to wide to Vike on the other side of the pitch. Wolves attacking down the right. Semedo will be beaten to that by Bidwell. Bidwell lines it up and clears the ball with his left foot and Gary O'Neill, like a good rugby union fullback, catches the ball, calls for a mark, throw in for Wolves on the right. Hugo Bueno. Next substitute waiting to come on for Wolves. Doyle's knocked over. The ball runs to Semedo on the right. Looks for an early cross. Thumped into the face of Bidwell. And goes behind for a Wolves corner. 20 minutes to play. Fabulous drama in the FA Cup, as always, here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Wolves nil, Coventry 1. Next football commentary in the Premier League. Big game at the bottom of the table. Luton, Nottingham Forest kicks off at three. Corner for Sarabia into the far post. Good stretch and catch from Bradley Collins. Had a couple of goes at grabbing onto the ball as he was falling, but did so for Coventry. And now takes his time 
with the ball in his hands. Brilliant goalkeeping. If you're under pressure, you know the crowd are against you. The last thing you want is, uh, not the last thing, but you don't want your keeper punching those if you can catch him. It allows Wolves to keep the pressure on. As soon as a goalkeeper catches that, you're up the pitch. Everybody relieves the pressure. Sims wins the first header for Coventry. Finds Hadji Wright. Back to Eccles. Eccles to Kitching, the centre-back across to Bobby Thomas. Thomas with his right foot. Pinpoint pass at real pace as well to Van Airbike. Nice ball into the feet here of Sheaf. Sheaf with a left-footed curling effort way over the crossbar, wide of the target as well. Optimistic at best and a goal kick for Wolves. Yeah, strange decision. I mean, again, Coventry had people in great positions. They had probably five, minimum six players ready to get into the penalty area. And it was one of few occasions, even Mark Robbins down below has put his arms in the air saying, what are you doing? Just keep the ball moving. Mark Robbins, Coventry manager, chewing away on the gun. Face impassive. Tommy Doyle is off. Hugo Bueno is on for Wolves. We're into the last 20 minutes of this quarter-final. And Coventry closing in on a place in the last four where they could potentially face Manchester City or Newcastle. They play at half-five tonight. Chelsea or Leicester, 12.45 tomorrow. Commentary on Five Live. Manchester United or Liverpool who play at half three at Old Trafford tomorrow. Eight Nuri scoops the ball up, gets onto his own little flick. Then he's tackled by Sheep cleared away but only as far as Sarabia in space on the left hand side for Wolves is Matt Doherty Doherty oh, nearly tripped inside the penalty area he's looking to get it onto his right foot to get the shot away Coventry have cleared but they're under pressure again Joao Gomez edge of the Coventry box hits the right foot his shot left handed save from Bradley Collins tips it past the post corner for Wolves yeah great effort brilliant save at the near post top corner I mean goalkeeper shouldn't be beat there but he had to do an awful lot to keep it out there. Collins, the goalkeeper. Wolves looking for the equaliser, could potentially take us to extra time. Sarabia's corner into the near post, headed away. Bounces just outside the box. O'Hare wins the header, ran into Semedo. He's down with a head injury here. Play continues, Eight Nuri slips as he shoots, luckily for Coventry. And the ball bounces harmlessly towards their goalkeeper, Bradley Collins. It wasn't a foul on O'Hare, but he was definitely well, caught in the head. He's down and play now stops. I'd like to see that again. I think the referee's got pretty much everything right today. I think he's had a good game, but if there's a connection there, it had to be a foul. It seemed like foot up. Mm. Semedo's in the air, his foot, he's jumped, he's tried to pull out, but I think more often than not, you expect a free kick for foot up there. And if he's, it's tough to see from the angles we've got, but if he's brushed him in any way, it's... And he has, you can see the, the cut on the end of his nose. Well, that's... It's amazing that's that the referee didn't give a foul there. It's a potential red card, I mean, for, for endangering a player's safety. Yeah, I mean, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt for pulling his foot out for me, Semedo. Okay. I, I would, but you can see initially he's gone for it, and you can see the look on Semedo's face as well, the angle was seen, he knew straight away. He was in disbelief the referee didn't blow for, Absolutely the, for a free Absolutely amazing. Kick. Right, we'll get back underway with Coventry in possession of the ball. Wolves nil, Coventry one. National League, Oldham, Chesterfield being watched by Sani Rodravadula. Just approaching the hour mark, Oldham two, Chesterfield one, but Chesterfield are pushing. Armando Dobra has just hit the bar with a curling effort. Remember, Chesterfield have to win and Barnett to slip up to go up, but a 2-1 down with an hour gone. Match of the day tonight, BBC One at 10.35. If you enjoy your golf, next two nights on Sports Extra are for you. Third and fourth round commentary uh, of the players' golf at Saw grass coverage starts tonight from half seven Wolves fans getting annoyed with Coventry keeper Bradley Collins he's got underneath that clearance lofted it in the air eight Nuri flips it forward Chiwome will chase covered here by Bobby Thomas who can't keep the ball in play on the right for Coventry and it's a Wolves throw I think what's been interesting is that change bringing uh, Bueno on to left back has, has made Wolves look better because they've moved eight Nuri basically to a number 10 position and we talked how his effect on the game so far that he's been involved in everything positive Wolves have done well now he's playing pretty much as a orthodox number 10 can Coventry make first FA Cup semi-final appearance since 1987 the year they went on to win the cup beating Leeds at Hillsborough in the semi-finals Tottenham 3-2 in the final, eight Nuri's been fouled. Free kick for Wolves inside left channel, about 35 yards from goal. 15 minutes to play, and Pablo Sarabia comes across quickly to grab the ball for Wolves, places it down on the spot in that little semicircle of vanishing spray put down by Sam Barra. He's marching Callum O'Hare back, who thankfully is okay, having taken the 
glancing blow to the face from the high foot from Semedo. And Coventry have a free kick to defend. Sarabia waits to take it. Right arm up in the air, seven or eight. Wolves players looking to attack it here at the far post. In towards Doherty, header. Eight Nuri off the post with his header. And Hitching clears the ball up in the air. Hadji right heads it away. Sarabia prompts a little pass down the left. Eight Nuri's cross is blocked. Corner for Wolves, they've hit the post. Well, Eight Nuri's been absolutely everywhere, but they have to score there. Mismatch at the far post. Bidwell's up against Kilman and Doherty. Doherty wins it. Eight Nuri should be there to tap in. It's been pretty similar to how Coventry scored at the other end of the pitch. Chances starting to come for Wolves. Deeper corner from Sarabia to the far post. No one there for Wolves, but running across here is Hugo Bueno. Right-hand side, corner of the Coventry box. Not the best pass from him. Semedo has to go chasing it inside the Coventry half. Plays it out to Sarabia, now onto Doherty. Doherty is tackled by Lata Baudier. Wolves take their throw in quickly. Time is running out for the Premier League team. Lamina with strength, running into the penalty area. Then he slips, loses his footing, goes down holding his face. Surely he's not going to get anything go his way that time. Bobby Thomas clears with his right foot. Ellis Sims starts to run inside his own half, not offside here. Jose Sar miles out of his area, under pressure. Shanks a clearance out of play for a throw into Coventry in an attacking position on the right. And then Jose Sar points to the referee, Sam Barrett, and says Lamina. Mina is down, holding his face. Leon, did he get a chance to see what happened there? Yeah, he slipped. I mean, it was it was Lamina himself slipping over and maybe falling into the arm of uh, of Thomas, but there's nothing Thomas could do about it. We're just seeing the replay back as well of that eight Nuri chance. He's stretching to try and make sure he can head it back across. It's, he's about two yards outside the width of the goal. He has a bit to do still, but I do still think he'd be disappointed he hasn't managed yeah. to get that. On target, make the goalkeeper make a save. Just didn't quite get the angle on the header. Collins was scrambling towards that near post, might have been able to, to keep it out. Struck the woodwork and came out. Wolves nil. Coventry won. Scrambled goal from Coventry, but a well worked set piece goal it was. The free kick from Palmer headed back across goal and bundled in at the far post. Uh, Callum O'Hare battling hard for Coventry. Now he's tackled. Lamina on the ball for Wolves, pass forward, doesn't find Chiwome. Hadji Wright receives it for Coventry, gives it to Sims who gives it straight back to Wright. Moving in between Wolves defenders up to the edge of the area, pass to O'Hare. O'Hare looking for Wright again, just intercepted and now Chiwome, but deep for Wolves inside his own half. Ball forward to Sarabia, well tackled by Kitching, Kitching finds O'Hare. O'Hare again running at Wolves defenders, little slip pass to Wright, Wright slow cross blocked at the near post by Santiago Bueno. But the last touch comes off right and goes behind for the goal kick. Another goal at Oldham in the National League, Sani Rodrovadula. Well, 1,700 Chesterfield fans are on their feet. It's Oldham 2, Chesterfield 2. Joe Quigley, cool side foot finish from the penalty spot. Oldham John Torelli Sims hits the shot straight at Jose Saru, makes the save. Power on the strike, just couldn't get it either side of the keeper. That would have won uh, the cup tie. So Oldham 2, Chesterfield 2. If Chesterfield can turn it around and win that game, they can be promoted from the National League today. That is if Barnett failed to beat Woking later on. Wolves nil, Coventry oh, one. Another chance Coventry will be kicking themselves for not making this cup tie a bit more secure at this moment. It's a volley from 14 yards out centre of the goal. He just hit it straight at the goalkeeper. Had to be a foul on Nelson Semedo, not given. Semedo's given up, he's not even bothering to chase back here. And then it's a poor pass from O'Hare and players are looking slightly tired in the closing stages of this game. Ten minutes to play. Coventry of the Championship, 10 minutes plus added time away from a famous win, brilliant strike from O'Hare, Saar equal to it with the save, cross in, nearly finds Sims from the right, Van Erweik's cross, hit at pace, Sims stretch, couldn't get a header on the ball and Jose Saar with the save there from O'Hare has kept Wolves in the cup tie. Well, apart from the, them finding the back of the goal, this has been a brilliant attacking performance from, from Coventry, I mean that was a good effort as you said from O'Hare initially, good save from uh, from Jose Saab, but the ability from Van Erweik to just whip that across, you thought that uh, Ellis Sims was going to be tapping in his second with his head, but brilliant bit of defended. It was by Kilman in there, really good. I mean, it's so exciting. Coventry will not believe how they've not got the second goal in this game. Ellis Sims has the goal to his name, the goal that at the moment is taking Coventry through to an FA Cup semi-final owner, a second in the club's history. Mark Robbins writing up another FA Cup 
story. The man who scored the, the famous third round winner for Manchester United back in 1990, the semi-final winner against Oldham that year. Now as a manager trying to take Coventry through to the semi-finals, leading 1-0 and they've got an attacking set piece from wide on the left. Bidwell happy to take his time. The whistle blows. Coventry's left back Bidwell curls a good ball in. Headed away at the near post by Wolves young striker Chiwome. Sheaf looking for Bidwell again on the left. Just able to keep it in by the touchline. Another cross into the near post. Nearly tucked in by Kitching. Saar saves Wolves again. Oh, Jose Saar, man of the match. I mean, that's brilliant play again from Coventry. Good bit of play from Sheaf down that left hand side. Plays it behind the fullback for Bidwell, who's got no other thought than I'm going to touch this and whip it around Semedo. If you're not going to close that cross and angle it, once Kitchen gets there, he's just trying to put that deft touch on it. We can't really do any more, to be fair, he's stretching so much and goalkeeper Jose Sarr in the right place again. So many chances Coventry have had to win this tie quite comfortably. Are Wolves going to get another chance to potentially take us to extra time? Coventry corner, swung in right under the crossbar. Jose Sarr confidently takes it, comes running out, barging Coventry players out of his way. Rolls the ball out into the left-back position. Hugo Bueno now on as the substitute, plays it to Lamina. Cross here to Semedo. Both Buenos on the field now. Leon, you said that wasn't really meant to be allowed, <laughs> didn't you, at the start of the game? If you're going to bring one on, take the other one off. Towards Chiwome, the 18-year-old for Wolves. Spins and plays the ball out to Sarabia on the right. Sarabia disguised on the pass. Good ball to Joao Gomez. Cross comes in. Might fall for eight. Nuri! On the right foot. in two weeks a sweet right foot volley to make it Wolves 1 Coventry 1 well he was always going to be the player Eight Nuri he's had a really good day on the ball off the ball he's got into really good positions his passing and his dribbling has been excellent and this one just happens to be in the right place at the right time one of the few times that Wolves have got in behind the Coventry defence Gomez makes the run into the right wing channel he whips it across and it's Lata Baudier with a really poor attempt at just clearing it. Hits both of his thighs and just pops up. Centre of the goal, probably 10 yards out on the volley. Eight Nuri on his right foot. Not easiest when it's on your weaker foot. Your concentration levels have to be high, but brilliantly volleyed in. Coventry immediately back on the attack, but the offside flag goes up as Hadji Wright collects the ball on the left. Six minutes plus added time away. From extra time, Mark Robbins has seen it all before. Hands in pockets, his face hasn't changed. Coventry unable to clear the danger. And eight Nuri, who, as Leon was saying, pushed forward into that attacking role. Crucial thing he kept doing there. He continued his run, Leon, didn't he? So that he was there if the yeah. chance presented well, itself. He's played, he's played outside left, he's played centre midfield, he's played left back, he's played number 10. He's now basically playing up front in a 4 4 2, <laughs> running beyond the strikers. So he's been everywhere. Well, if anyone was going to get this goal or create this goal today for Wolves it was going to be him but Coventry are kicking themselves at the moment but there's still still a bit of this game they could go and win it from here so could Wolves Chiwome chasing for Wolves Kitchen beats him to the ball plays it back to his goalkeeper Bradley Collins you're listening to the FA Cup drama on BBC Radio 5 Live Eight Nuri comes back from an offside position and loads of fabulous sport coming your way across the weekend on Five Live and Sports Extra, all available on the BBC Sounds app, as are all the podcasts as always, the Rugby Union Daily in the build-up to the Six Nations this weekend, Wales-Italy kicks off at 2.15, commentary of that game over on Sports Extra, and the Football Daily later tonight, tomorrow morning, will be well worth uh, a listen to. Starting off with the... Uh, Reaction and analysis to this game, which is far from over. FA Cup quarter-final. Wolves 1, Coventry 1. Wolves with a throw-in on the right, saved by Jose Saar. Some wasteful Coventry finishing. And Rayan 8 Nuri with his second goal in two weeks. Semedo inside his own half. Back to Santiago Bueno. Thumps it forward. 8 Nuri is the centre forward now chases. Cleared. O'Hare tripped. Free kick for Coventry inside the centre circle. Luton, Nottingham Forest kicks off at three o'clock 
this afternoon. This one started at 12.15, so even with extra time and penalties, I think we'd still get there in time, I'd hope, for the start of that game. Hadji Wright to Bidwell, Bidwell's crossing to the box, Lamina is there, heads it away on the stretch, Semedo jumps, Bidwell is behind him, lets the ball run away for a throw into Coventry on the left. Bidwell just comes walking towards the touchline. Wolves fans much the louder at the moment inside this stadium, tackle is made, throw in for Coventry. Yeah, I just think at this stage, you know, when you're out there on the field and it's this stage of a, of a cup tie, you know potential of extra times. I think having just got the goals, Wolves will be keen to get forward and try and create that chance. I think maybe at this stage, despite Coventry going forward, I think you start to think, let's not concede another one here. Yeah. Let's, my legs are starting to feel a little bit tired. We put an awful lot in. We should have been 3-0 up at least by this point. Let's at least get to extra time. Fabulous chances in the first half for Ellis Sims, who's been on the score sheet for Coventry here today with the goal in the second half. Van Ervijk as well, Jose Sarr, brilliant save from Callum O'Hare. Other chances that have presented themselves as well for Coventry, but they've only got the one goal. Sims trying to close Santiago Bueno down, who turns, plays back to his goalkeeper Sarr. Crosses penalty area to Kilman. Wide it goes to Hugo Bueno down the line. Hugo Bueno receives again forward to Eight Nuri. Eight Nuri. So difficult to stop when he's gliding forward at speed like this. Still running at Coventry defenders. Teammates in support. Chance for Hugo Bueno, who sticks it in with his left foot. Wolves have gone from end to end there to break Coventry's heart. It's a fabulous goal. Eight Nuri with the gliding run to create it for substitute Hugo Bueno. Such a cool finish into the bottom corner. And it's now Wolves who are heading towards the FA Cup semi-finals. Wolves 2, Coventry 1. There's a football brilliant. I mean, Wolves have been way off the pace by what we expected today. Coventry have been outstanding, but you just sensed it. I said moments ago, Coventry need to get to extra time. Wolves will be trying to push forward and the man who is obviously going to be pushing forward is Aitno. He picks the ball up just inside the Coventry half and he drives and he twists and he turns and he has defenders basically falling over their own feet before he cuts inside and picks the right pass. He picks out the substitute. Here go Bueno who's come on for him. Bueno came on at left back. It allowed Aitnori to play further forward. Those two linked up. Bueno played the ball out, just continued his run. And Ain't Nori found him. And then when you just got into that position, you just felt he was going to score. They've scored the first goal. It was all set up for that to be finished. Brilliant finish. And just seeing pictures of Mark Robbins, he just looks stunned. What a run. What a pass. What a finish. Hugo Bueno's first goal for Wolves. The 21-year-old Spaniard off the bench to potentially put Wolves into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Coventry led for 83 minutes. Eight Nuri scored in the 83rd and Bueno in the 88th minute. Hadji Wright on the left. Classic FA Cup football. Championship team Coventry have been so good. Cross him, right flicks it across goal. Bueno is able to hook the clearance away and it runs out to the left. Eight Nuri chases, that will be a throw in for Coventry on the right. Wolves two, Coventry one, 89th minute plus a bit of added time on the way. An absolute sickener for Coventry City uh, and their fans. Who've been, they have been brilliant, haven't they, Leon? Oh, Coventry have. I mean, despite them just conceding two late goals, I thought the nine minutes added up. <laughs> Sorry, that, that surprised me. But this, I mean, we did have an awful big stop for, for the VAR. But, yeah, I thought Coventry, the two centre-halves, I think that, that, yeah, all over the pitch, I think they've been outstanding today. They'll think that their performance should have justified a victory but no matter how well you play if you don't take your chances you give the opposition an opportunity to stay in the game and then take it off you Wolves 2, Coventry 1 we're into nine minutes of added time on BBC Radio 5 Live at the start of a fabulous day of sport on this station and on Sports Extra. Three o'clock commentary in the Premier League will be a tense one, a tight one at Kenilworth Road. Luton against Nottingham Forest. Ian Dennis with the team news. One change for Luton and Panzer for Hashioka. Three changes for Forest. Sangari, Ilanga and Bolly come in for Dominguez, Dino and Omar Deli. So added time underway at Molyneux. Wolves fans in fine voice. At the moment, Wolves heading 
through to the semi-finals of the FA Cup. A trip to Wembley for them. Last winners in 1960. Six semi-finals since then, uh, all of which they've lost. They've won themselves a throw-in on the left. Two left-backs scoring the goals for them late in this game. Throw-in down the touchline. Headed away, Matt Doherty is there, flicks a little pass down the right, offside flag goes up, Burnley Brentford kicks off at three in the Premier League this afternoon, Mas Faruqi has the team news at Turf Moor. And company has dropped goalkeeper Trafford to the bench, Kumuric, who comes in for his Premier League debut, two changes for Brentford, Jensen replacing the injured Norgard, Regulon returns in place to Keane Lewis Potter, and Bomo is a substitute. Uh, Fulham Tottenham kicks off at half five in the Premier League this afternoon, full uninterrupted commentary of that game on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Sims goes down, doesn't get a free kick, throw in for Wolves on the right. Nelson Semedo gets ready to take it. What can Coventry summon up in the last seven minutes now of this game to try, find themselves a goal and take us into extra time? Semedo heads the ball away, it might run to O'Hare, just beyond him. Cleared by Santiago Bueno, Nuri flicks it on, Chiwome's caught free kick for Wolves inside their own half. Yeah, you can feel from the way the game has gone that there's at least another chance in this game for Coventry. The question is, are they going to be able to take it? I mean, it's so many chances, so many really, really good chances, not just half chances in this game. It's about picking yourself up, believing, just, show, just finding that last bit of energy that's in you somewhere to drive forward, to create a big moment for the club. Victor Tork comes on for Josh Eccles. Fabio Tavares, a winger, is going to come on uh, for Coventry 2. He'll replace Joel Latibodier. Wolves leading Coventry by two goals to one. Coventry City, the subject of Tony Livesey's fact of the day on Friday, which I very nearly forgot to squeeze into Coventry today, now that we're deep in added time. All about their former chairman Jimmy Hill, what a pioneer he was in the world of football, his involvement in that famous show World of Sport, the rival to Grandstand on ITV back in the days. Eight Nuri shot in towards the near post from a tight angle uh, is well saved by the goalkeeper. Bradley Collins, who's got to hurry things along, drives the ball downfield with his right foot. Hadji Wright will chase it, but it's just beyond him and into that Wolves penalty area and Jose Sarr catches it and then flops to the floor and it was talking about some of the sports uh, on World of Sport back in the day Leon Osman famous for having the wrestling it had some, some bizarre sports in there as well I had to guess which one out of three uh, was a real one and apparently used to show hovercraft racing I think it would have been before your time Leon but that was a sport I'm shown on, it was before my time <laughs> shown on national terrestrial television uh, back in the 80s presented by Dickie Davis that was Tony Livesey's fact of the day you can hear it every Friday afternoon at about 20 past 5 in the build up to the weekend's football which has started with a bang here at Molyneux Coventry looking for the equaliser O'Hare's brought down as he drives forward for Coventry just inside the Wolves half four minutes of added time have been played five minutes of added time remaining and Gary O'Neill getting in a right round with the fourth official Michael Salisbury at the moment Fabio Tavares running at Hugo Bueno who looks like he's going to be the match winner for Wolves, the 21-year-old Spaniard, the left-back who never previously scored for the club, has done it in an FA Cup quarter-final. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have many options, I've got to be honest, but still an inspired substitution to take your best player and put him number 10 and bring on a player that's going to score the winner, potentially. Tavares ball into the Wolves' penalty area. Jose Sa, now that was on target. I mean, it came back at him like a back pass. He controlled it with his foot right in front of the goal line, dribbles it to his right and then again falls on the ball as Ellis Sims closes in and Wolves professionally trying to see this game out. Four minutes of it remaining. Coventry leading through the Ellis Sims goal, having the chances to go further and further ahead throughout the game. They weren't able to take them. It left them vulnerable and Wolves have hit them with two late goals in the space of five minutes. Sars clearance not the best. The ball still in the Wolves' half. Kilman, low measured pass out to Doherty on the left, back to Hugo Bueno, Kilman forward, eight Nuri coming back from the offside position, Coventry will have a free kick, four and a half minutes to go, looking for the equaliser. Manchester City, Newcastle, second FA Cup quarter-final, kicks off at half five this afternoon, John Murray and Chris Waddle will be at that one for us, you can watch it in full on BBC One, second half commentary for us here on Five Live, after Ireland, Scotland in the Six Nations. Uh, here's Victor Torp 
one of the Coventry substitutes back to Bidwell plays it into the midfield Coventry have lost it Joao Gomez prods it forward to Chiwome Chiwome running into a tight spot Lamina is tackled here's O'Hare for Coventry drops a shoulder 25 yards out in a central position wide he goes to Tavares Tavares chance to run at Bueno inside the penalty area lays it back to O'Hare strong challenge on him shot from Torp miscued on the edge of the box still Coventry come again though little turn on the edge of the box from Sheaf referee's not buying that as a foul or a free kick ball is fired wide to Hadji Wright Wright heading for the byline on the left cross comes in flick to the far post Ellis Sims heads it in from two yards out totally unmarked Mark Robbins leaps for joy the Coventry manager and it does look like we're heading to extra time at Molyneux and you have to say Coventry deserved the equaliser Sims get his, gets his second Wolves two Coventry two oh, hands on the heads for some of the Wolves players out there they had it in their hands they're in for the last three or four minutes I've had a time just defend your old penalty area but you knew you knew Coventry were going to have the ability to create a chance and they get the ball out to right on the left hand side he does Semedo all ends up and just digs it into the penalty area and Thomas has gone forward I think it's Thomas attacks the front post they put bodies forward and he's brilliant because I don't think he's trying to score from that position. I think he's just trying to help it on. And in doing so, he helps it on to where his centre forward has stood, ready and waiting. And he's missed a big chance early in the game. He scored one already in the game. Well, he's just scored his second, Ellis Sims. Good header. And we've got a game still. <laughs> Here we go, 2-2, 90 seconds remaining. Ellis Sims with a hat-trick against Maidstone United in the fifth round. Two goals against Premier League Wolves in the quarter-finals. Wolves 2, Coventry 2, and it looks like half an hour of extra time and potentially a penalty shootout on the way in the first FA Cup quarter-final on the BBC this weekend. Kilman's ball forward with his left foot, headed away by Thomas. Sheaf's ball slid up towards O'Hare O'Hare takes a tumble no free kick into the last minute now of the game Wolves looking for a hugely dramatic late winner cross comes into the box headed away by Kitching right got to be careful slightly loose first touch nudges it back to his goalkeeper Collins panics a little slices the clearance up in the air Sarabia keeps it in play 30 seconds to go curling ball towards the far post Collins stretches and catches and goes tumbling in the six yard box and uh, gratefully clings on to that white FA Cup football. Yeah, good hands again. I mean, he's probably two yards out. The ball is spinning, he's under pressure. You could quite easily bend it up in the back of his own goal. For his catching, has been assured today. And he brought that one in very well. I think we're now at the stage where both teams are probably say, I'm ready for another 30 minutes of football. <laughs> Nine minutes of added time are up. That's the minimum amount of allotted time. So any second now, I think Sam Barrett is going to blow the full-time whistle and let us know. We've got 30 minutes more of this uh, on the way. Full credit to Coventry to keep going, having been hit by those two late goals from Ait Nuri and Hugo Bueno. And Ellis Sims in the right place. Brilliant flick on at the near post to find him. Could not miss from there, although we said that in the first half and he did manage to miss a chance. Throw him down the line towards O'Hare. O'Hare gets away from Joao Gomez, crossing the box. Sims lays it back. I don't believe it! Hadley Wright has curled it into the bottom corner and Coventry are through to only their second ever FA Cup semi-final. The players in the sky blue go racing towards the thousands of fans in the sky blue who are in ecstasy at Molyneux. A brilliantly worked goal laid up by Ellis Sims, touched back to Hadji Wright, and the finish was perfect into the bottom corner. Molyneux is stunned, and Championship Team Coventry are going through. Wolves 2, Coventry 3. Wow, what a game of football we have witnessed here. Two teams going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, never giving up. And I thought both teams are probably just at that stage now with maybe 20 seconds to go that they're accepting extra time is coming their way, but not Coventry. They've been so positive all afternoon, moving the ball forward, getting it into Ellis Sims, who's been such a handful today. And you thought, is he going to try and turn? Is he going to try and do something? He just laid it into the path of Wright, who's also been outstanding today in this game. And as the ball comes in, as you said, we're right behind it from here. You wondered, has he got the ability? He just passed it in. 
and sent the Coventry fans wow absolutely crazy well how long is left Wolves have kicked off the game trailing 3-2 they were leading 2-1 deep uh, into added time Ellis Sims and Hadji Wright and Coventry have the ball and they're running it away but they don't need to worry anymore they're going to Wembley for an FA Cup semi-final they've beaten Premier League Wolves by three goals to two on their own turf they've created countless chances this afternoon they thought they had the game won at 1-0 conceded two goals in the space of five minutes late in the game but they never gave up and the, in the image of their brilliant manager Mark Robbins have fashioned two great goals at the end of the game Ellis Sims heading in from close range and then Sims involved in the winner the brilliant layoff into the feet of Hadji Wright to stick it into the bottom corner to give us some story at the start of FA Cup quarter-final weekend the Wolves players are stunned flat on their backs on the pitch here and it's Coventry going through Wolves 2 Coventry 3 Leon Osman <laughs> well we've witnessed it Probably one of the best quarter-finals of an FA Cup I've seen I think it's been an outstanding game of football and I think Coventry were at the heart of everything that was positive about this game Wolves hung in there and Wolves were brilliant the way they got themselves in front going into the latter stages this game was pretty much all about Coventry and, you know they were outstanding they were in front they should have been more in front they fell behind in injury time most teams would have probably thought that's it tie over we can't get back into it but they found something and you look I'm looking at the, the subs that they were able to make I'm looking at how they're reacting to certain things encouraging willing each other on and I think you can see that in the way they're celebrating as well. They've got goal scorers in the team, Sims and Wright. They've scored an awful lot of goals between them this season now. I think that's uh, I think that's probably 29 goals between them now, which is an outstanding return. And they've got themselves into the semi-finals of an FA Cup. Never, ever, ever give up. Ellis Sims scored in the 97th minute. Hadji Wright scored in the 100th minute of the game. Milan... Van Erwijk, the Dutch right back, leading the celebrations for Coventry. They're away in the corner of the stadium, quite rightfully celebrating with four and a half thousand Coventry fans. An afternoon they will never ever forget. Only the second semi-final in the club's history. And they looked out for the count, 1-0 up after 83 minutes, 2-1 down. But two late, late goals give us an incredible story here. And Coventry will play in the semi-finals this season and good luck good luck to whoever plays against them Mark that that could well be the best game of the season but do you not think <laughs> yeah, I can't I'm trying, I'm trying to wrap my brains and think of one of enjoy I mean not if you're a Wolves fan obviously but I'm, I'm wrapping my brains and think I can't think of one that I've enjoyed more this season than that Jeff as you, I've hardly been in my seat I've headed I've kicked it I've dived in at the far post it's been such an enthralling game at both ends of the pitch chances effort tackles good refereeing I thought as well I oh, thought that, was do you know what I, I was going to say that as well he he wasn't influenced by players throwing themselves to the floor he let it flow he he's played his part in making that a good game absolutely he allowed it to flow when he could and and I thought we saw a, a good game because of it and I thought as I said coming to the game I was thinking of Coventry going to try and play on the counter-attack they're going to low block it the modern day term and, and stay in no they took the game to Wolves right from the first whistle and it made for a brilliant cup tie for us all to watch and they created chance after chance they maybe they'll probably wonder why they didn't score seven, seven or eight goals here they've created that many chances but they got enough to get them through the um and there are so many different things you could pick out from that commentary performance. But just in the final goal, Leon, the layoff from Sims to right was perfect. Yeah, I mean, such a crucial part of the game. You know, if he messes that up, we've all got half an hour of football. Well, he doesn't bobble it in. It, no. the, the, the weight is right. It's it's completely the across angle, the grass. The angle was difficult as well. It wasn't it wasn't a straightforward angle where he's just passing it across. It was it was an over the shoulder kind of layoff that Wright didn't have to do anything except stand on the spot and pick his pick where he was placing it. And it was a it was a really good goal. They had a throw in and Wolves at that point it was in front of the Coventry bench Wolves were sort of kicking the ball away. The, the, the Wolves ball people were taking a bit of time to, to, to bring the ball back. They basically accepted, take our time. Coventry are on the attack. 
it's going to go to to extra time. And Coventry thought we've got one last chance here. Let's try and make the most of it. And by heck, did they just? Uh, and I think the finish as well, Martin. Yes. The, the layoff yeah. was perfect, but then he doesn't try and lash it, does it? And he doesn't try and do too much and put it too far beyond Jose. So he just steps onto it and passes but it so sweetly let, into the bottom corner. Let's be honest, Bethy, as well. They could have had six, yeah. given the chances that they didn't take. Quite easily. I mean, their athleticism, their power, their fitness, and then their quality showed through as well today, Coventry. They certainly didn't look like a team sat eighth in the championship today from how they played against this Wolves team. And Wolves are potentially challenging for European football in the Premier League. I know they're missing people at the top end, important people, that they're, they're goal scorers, and Wolves look like they were missing that today. But take nothing away from Coventry. They came here against a, a team that has defended quite well in the Premier League this season and tore them to part at they, times. They've scored 19 goals in five cup ties, FA Cup ties this season. And I know you're looking at different levels of opposition, but it shows you that they can do that against anyone because of what they've done today. And the, the, I mean, you, you are obviously watching uh, the celebrations and they're on the far side of the pitch to where you are sitting, but you will also see... The, the facial expressions of the players and the backroom staff and you know they're all pointing at each other they're all dancing in front of in front of their fans they're all celebrating and Mark Robbins just looks like he's waiting for a bus yeah. I mean <laughs> he's just so calm yeah yeah well he's been there seen it done it hasn't he hasn't he Mark but you know what it takes me right back Mark to that little clip we played of him right at the start of the show and this is what he was talking about about not letting the opportunity pass you by and they absolutely